You're listening to the Vic 757 Podcast featuring Dwight and Michael Vic talking all things tech. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the edition of the Vic 757 Show talking all things tech. I'm your host, former all-conference offensive lineman and captain Dwight Vic. Alongside with me is not my normal sidekick and co-host, as you guys can see. Um, just some news to update everybody watching as we record this show. Um, I just got off the phone with Mike. I, uh, for those who don't know, he lives in Florida. He lives in the Miami area. Um, things were pretty rough last night. I talked to him minutes before I hit record on this episode, and he's a no-go because safety comes first. So he lives in Miami, Florida. And um, his power has been going off and on. Um, he's not in the direct effect of the storm, but he's getting some serious effects where uh, I want all you guys watching Hokie Nation, even if you're not a Hokie Nation member, um, if you subscribe to this show and you support people, I want everyone in Florida to be safe and get through this very, very powerful historic storm. But on a positive note, I got a longtime friend of the show, and I, I'm a fan of this guy, Chris Coleman. Managing editor and sports analyst for Virginia Tech's Tech Sideline, one of the best in the business. He's going to hold it down for me on the first half of the show. Chris has been on the Victory Life Legacy podcast with me and Danny Noakes. Um, so I am excited to have him on. Uh, Chris, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. You know, uh, Mike was always my favorite player when I was in high school. And uh, now I'm his backup. Never, never thought I'd be able to say that. Well, yeah, man. And um I, you know, we were going to have you on anyway. Um, you know, we were going to have you on, and that was part of the plans. And I would, we still will get you in the future because we're going to be doing more shows this year and next season. But I, I wanted to have you on because you give great insight. Uh, for those who don't know, him and Will Stewart have a top notch site, and they started this whole game back when I played, back when I had hair, back when DJ Clue mixtapes were popping. Will Stewart and Chris Coleman covered me. And Mike and Shy and Jared Ferguson, Maurice Shazay's old drum drunk man, all the greats, all the great role players, they covered us. And then when I was done playing, I started reading Chris and Will's material. So, like Nas said, I borrowed from both of them. So <laughs> um, I'm happy to have Chris on. But um, Chris, before we talk the West Virginia game and look ahead to North Carolina, let me shout out because I got some great news. And I wish Mike was on here to share it, but he'll be on next week. But we just got another sponsor to the team. I want to shout out my guy, Nick, and the Commonwealth NIL. And we just picked up a sponsorship with the Hokie Way. This is going, they're going to sponsor our former player segment when we have Virginia Tech players on. Hokie Way is an independent nonprofit organization that will create active engagement for Virginia Tech student athletes with charitable goals it has launched. More information about them will be coming forth, but they're going to join us and join our team. Hokie Way is definitely going to be part of this thing with the VIX 757 show, talking all things tech. And they're going to be helping out with the NIL stuff. So, again, more to come. That's a little tease. Um, I'm learning about the NIL. I wish I had NIL. Me and Mike talk about it because I know Mike, even in the 90s and early 2000s, would have been a millionaire before he stepped foot in Atlanta. <laughs> um, that's for sure. But Hokey Way is definitely someone we're going to be um, looking forward to doing business with and also partnering with them to move forward. So we picked up our third sponsor. So we're excited about that, man. The program is growing. We're trying to be like Tech Sideline and – push the envelope for Hokie Nation. But Chris, were you in attendance for the West Virginia game? Were you there in attendance? I was. I was in section three. We had a great tailgate and everything was just peachy until that second half started. And uh, it was a great atmosphere, great atmosphere all day long, great atmosphere in the, in the stands, great atmosphere for inner Sandman. I uh, just wish the result could have been a little bit different, of course. Yeah, you know, um, I watched it on TV. My, my son took my ticket because I work late Thursday nights. Um, and my son, who's a junior in high school, big tech fan, um, and my wife, who loves tech. I Actually, with this hurricane talk, I remember her and I went to a Thursday night game when Virginia Tech was hosting Texas A&M. Uh -huh. It was a hurricane hitting Blacksburg in Virginia at the time. And I was soaked. And this is back when we had Brian Randall and Kevin Jones and company. And she did not want to leave. She was pregnant with my son. <laughs> and um, she, when she found out that Tech was hosting West Virginia, it was a must-see for her. 
And um, she came back disappointed. She said everything was great except the end result. Um, I, I, I've always said when we finally get this thing back to where it needs to be and better, Hokie Nation is a fan base that deserves all the success because they showed out a few weeks ago for an 11 a.m. kickoff. Yeah. The whiteout. Then they came and, they, I mean, everybody talked about the atmosphere. But at the same time, it once turned to a great atmosphere to a disappointing um, loss. Let's talk about that, man. Um, what this? Let's start with the good. So what, mm-hmm. what did you think Tech did well overall for four quarters? You know, I, I thought the defense hung in there um, to the best of their ability, considering how much they had to be on the field. I think they were on the field for for thirty eight minutes um, and seventy six snaps. And you know that that's too much against a high powered offense like West Virginia, a, a, a balanced offense. You know, they can throw it and they can run it. Uh, I thought the longer the game went on, the worse the defense played, of course, as you would expect. Some of that was their own fault with the penalties, but for the most part, they were out there for reasons other than what they caused. So, uh, you know, I I don't think it's like – it's not like the 2005 or the 99 or the 95 defense, but it is a solid defense that can can win if they get some help. Yeah. You know, Chris, one of the things I observed in the ODU game and I observed it in the Wofford game, and I definitely observed it in the West Virginia game, and it rid its ugly head in the ODU game, and especially in West Virginia game, is that um, we'll talk about the offensive line, the offense here in a second, but I felt like Virginia Tech as a whole, especially um, on defense and offense on both sides, minus special teams, did not make game-winning plays. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, you have those two touchdown passes Grant Wells missed on. Um, Obviously, one of them, he got pressure, but – the guy was wide open. Then you have in the top of the third quarter, we go three and out, and then they muffed the punt. And historically, we always got those muff punts, those fumble recoveries. Yeah. And then you look at, you know, the other plays that we missed on where the pass hits the kid in the helmet, right in the front, right in the helmet. Those were back-to-back plays. The, hit him in the helmet, and then the next play we punted, they muffed it, and we, we didn't fall on it. Or we did fall yeah. on it, and then somehow we didn't recover yeah, so, and, 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 and those game-winning plays were there in ODU where, okay, you have a high snap, you recover it, you go into halftime up 10-3. No, they get it, and, and they go up. <laughs> and and then, you know, you have the West Virginia game, and I, I felt like, you know, early in the game, if Grant Wells can connect on that touchdown, that's the drive we, we went for it on fourth and one and didn't get it. I feel like, respectfully to West Virginia, a high-powered offense, I still feel like if you go up 14-3 with the way the crowd was, the energy, the confidence we need as an offense, as a team, I don't know if West Virginia can overcome that, even though they can score with the best of them because the defense, as you just mentioned, was on the field too long and the game winning plays really, really set us back. We didn't make those. Yeah, Um, and I think also if you're up by uh, 11 points, you're up by two scores like that, it takes away some of their balance. Maybe they get a little more pass heavy at that point. And, uh, you know, if you can get them off the field on some three and outs, you're not out there for 76 plays, or at least you're not out there trying to tackle that 240 pound running back so many times, right? That'll wear you out as a defense right there. I mean, when West Virginia is playing three backs and one of them's 240 pounds, man, and they can just rotate guys in and out. So, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you want to get up by, uh, by double figures on everybody, of course, but, you know, looking back at that football game, uh, yeah, if Tech would have been able to score on that drive, it could have changed West Virginia's play calling. Maybe they felt like they they would have needed to go a little pass heavy at that point, down by two scores. So that's that's something that could have, could have made a difference. You you know, also too with that, you talk about in that game where West Virginia um, offensively they can score with the best of them, but if you look at it, when we were driving and we didn't get that fourth and one. Um, it was almost like the air went out the balloon. But even it, with that being said, we were still controlling the game defensively. And then you look at it where we stop them and we get the ball back with a minute and 40, minute and 50 before the half. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, okay, again, this is a way to end the half with at least a field goal or at least keep them off the field. Not to get overly critical, but in a two-minute drill as a former player and even the guy that still watches the game now, I've always noticed that even when you look at the Tom Brady's or even the collegiate and high school offenses, there's a misconception you have to throw every down. But in the two minute, you can still run the ball. And Virginia Tech 
went strictly pass and mm. they didn't get anything out of it. West Virginia subsequently gets the ball back and scores before the half. I thought that was a really, really big time backbreaker because they went into the half with momentum, man. What were your thoughts about that? Yeah, I think in a situation like that, you know, West Virginia had a timeout left. And I, I think I wish Tech had forced West Virginia to use their timeout by running the football. E even if, like, you don't score, take some time off the clock. And even if you punt it, they don't have their timeout left and they got to drive the length of the field without a timeout. And you're still up seven to six at halftime. And so I thought it was tough. They're only having the ball for about 40 seconds and punting it right back to them. And the defense had just come off a drive where they were on the field for four minutes. And then you only keep the ball for 40 seconds. And just like that, West Virginia has it right back. Um, so again, I, I thought like you want to score right there, but, but I also think you have to help your defense. You have to think, at how do we help our defense here? Cause they're playing a good game. Uh, and, and I think the answer to that is, you know, make sure West Virginia has to use their timeout when you've got the ball. And that way, you know, they're not going to have the opportunity to go on this long drive down the field. I guess the defense that is tired because they were just on the field for four minutes. Yeah. Talking with Chris Coleman, the Tech Sideline Managing Editor, um, and also Sports Analyst for Tech Sideline, one of the greats in the media business covering tech for those listening on Spotify and those watching on YouTube um, or listening on YouTube, our YouTube channel. Um, Chris, you, as I mentioned, you were in the stadium and um, you were there and you've been coming to a lot of tech games. And, 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 I, and I said, it's not talk to you for those watching, those listening. I, I will call Chris even when Beamer was there during the Fuente era just to talk to him, just to get his feel, because this guy knows tech. Being in the stadium, um, seeing the hit or misses, you know, the success, but then also the disappointment. Um, before we break down North Carolina. What was your feeling? Obviously, you know, fandom aside, what was your feeling as you left the stadium um, losing to West Virginia as they kept the Black Diamond Trophy for the second and consecutive year? What was your thoughts? It's not losing to them, like, because Tech lost to them last year. You don't want to lose the game. But normally when you're playing a rival in, in, in a trophy game, you know you're going to get a chance to get that trophy back the next year. Mm. Like, like when Tech did lose to UVA, I mean, you don't like it, but you're like, okay, fine. Next year's game really means something now, right? We don't know when we'll have that opportunity again against West Virginia, if ever. I mean, these days with conference realignment and things like that, we have no idea when we get to play those guys again. And it it, it really hurts knowing that, that, I mean, God knows how old I'll be when we, when we get a chance to get that trophy back, man. That's the problem. It's, it's not losing it because, listen, when you play another big state school – that's as dedicated to football as West Virginia fan as West Virginia is, you're going to lose some of those games. It happens. I mean, they've, they've got good players and a passionate fan base. What you hate is you don't, you might not have the opportunity to compete with them. I, I, I don't like, I just want the opportunity to get it back. Right. And if they beat us, tip your cap. That means they were better, but uh, it's, it's tough to swallow knowing that you're not going to get that opportunity for a long, long time. Yeah. You know, um, let me just say this. Let me ask you this. Do you and Will um, feel like West Virginia should or they would be a great fit in the ACC? And before you answer that, I'm just going to say this. I missed playing them all these years because we played them in the FedEx um, Stadium where Washington Commanders play. I boycotted that game because I had been to the three previous games in FedEx. <laughs> so I decided not to go. Uh -huh. But it was tough because West Virginia is a guy that played – them in the old Big East days, West Virginia and Miami, I, respectful to UVA because UVA during my time was a good program and we were ranked and they were ranked. But the West Virginia Miami games was they were must see TV. They were physical. Coach Pry was part of those games as a GA. He's he knows about him even if he wasn't at Tech because of where he grew up. I love playing West Virginia. I I think it is a great rivalry game. Um, as you mentioned, our fans get it. Their fans get it. Um, it was some compelling matchups. And like I said, Miami and, and West Virginia in, in my five years at Tech, you know, we knew when we played them and they knew when they played us. And I was I was going against them during the Gary Steels, Amos Airway, Sean Foreman, uh, Mark Bolger days, and they were loaded. And mm -hmm. 
I hate hatred aside. There's a mutual respect there. No doubt. Do you, Absolutely. Do you do you and Will feel like they should be part of the uh, ace, or would it make sense to keep that rivalry going? Or I, I I certainly do, and I'm pretty sure Will would be on board with that as well. I just look around the ACC, and I think the main problem with this league is there's too many small private schools and not enough big state schools. You know, you look at those Big Ten schools, and they're all just massive as as far as the number of kids that go there, and they're and they're living alumni. I mean, they, they just hit you with numbers and there's nothing you can do about it from a money standpoint because there's just so many of them and they're spread out all over the place. You know, there's just too many small schools with small alumni bases in the ACC that aren't passionate about football. So yeah, like uh, I, I think West Virginia should be in the league. I would be an advocate of, of adding them if the, if the opportunity ever, ever came. Um, whatever league they're in, I still want to play them every year because you know listen i'm not saying that the uva rivalry is not the most important rivalry it's the in-state rivalry absolutely i think the west virginia rivalry is the most fun rivalry and you're right mm. I, you're right those old miami and west virginia games they were nastier than the tech uva games yes. nasty yes yes <laughs> they were no you can speak on it i mean they were i mean I know I sound like the old man get off my lawn type guy because I'm <laughs> reflecting because I, I I love I love the fact that we are in the ACC and I love the fact that they brought Pittsburgh and Syracuse and the rest of the guys. But I, I was not celebratory. I did not throw it in West Virginia fans faces that we left and they didn't because I have a lot of respect for that program, minus the nastiness in the stadium and some yeah. of the nonsense. But that's fans across the board. Um, I enjoy that. And I think it is a level of fun and excitement and intrigue when you have a nastiness to a football game. Um, I don't, I didn't see that on Thursday night because, you know, we don't play them enough and right. th it's not the same history amongst the players. You know, it was a, it was actually a pretty clean game minus Jalen Stroman's unfortunate hit, but it was, it was, it was, it was great that year we beat him in FedEx. And then even last year, uh, we lost in the goal line. That was heartbreaking. West Virginia tried to give us the game, but um, I, I hope we can we can get that going again. At least I don't know. Take ODU off. You know, I'm not gonna waste time on the show talking <laughs> about them. But maybe for a few years and get West Virginia on because um, I know uh, I, I read a lot of reviews from just national observers and they just raved about not just you know our entrance in the game, but how both teams, you know, were laying on the line. We just didn't have yep. the depth or the talent. Um, so, Chris, we turn our attention now to UNC. And when you were on the Victory Life Legacy podcast, we got a ton of views thanks to you uh, because you let it go and took some shots. Not anything unprofessional, but you were talking about UNC. Um, let's talk about Tech and UNC, man. We finally got that matchup. Um the funny thing about it is, even when Fuente was at the round, we are, I think he was five and one against he was, UNC. And he hated UNC too, but yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 we recruited some of their players. Um, obviously they're getting us back with the in-state guys with Dre Blah, but we've gotten Trey Turner and, and Dax Hollyfield, and um we had um Hendon Hooker, who was a North Carolina guy. So we taken a lot of their kids, but you know, despite our up and down and struggles. We have pretty much owned them since 04 and coming into the ACC. What do you expect this time? They're, uh, they're well, it's crazy how, like, directly opposite these football teams are. Like, their defense is bad and their offense is very good, and Tech is, like, the direct opposite. So, Tech fans, you're sitting here are probably being negative this week and saying, yeah, I know UNC's defense is bad, but they they haven't met the Tech offense yet. Well, I bet UNC fans are the opposite. They're probably sitting here saying, man, yeah, I know Tech's offense is bad, but gosh, wait till they have to – wait till they get to play our defense, right? So um, I, I, just, I just think it's it's strange how unbalanced they are. And I, I it's understandable why Tech is unbalanced at this point because there were big staff changes in the offseason and, you know, the, the talent level dropped off. The, the, and you had so many new faces in the transfer portal at quarterback and wide receiver. But, like, UNC has been fairly stable. And I know they added a new defensive coordinator this year, but it's the same old problems, which makes me elite – makes me lead to believe like they're they have an issue culturally on the defensive side of the ball there in my mm -hmm. opinion like I was watching their game this past weekend and and you know Notre Dame who had played mediocre offensively all year they only mm -hmm. put up 40 yards in the first quarter against UNC but then they put up 500 yards over the next three quarters and at one point you know a UNC player 
It was the Grimes kid, actually. They had to take him out of the game because he got frustrated, punched a Notre yep. Dame player in the head. And at one point, the sideline reporter said uh, there were be, there were clipboards being thrown on the sideline, finger pointing amongst the UNC defenders. And the UNC coaches had to come over and tell them to, quote, stop being selfish. So I, I, they already have, I think, cultural problems defensively. They're not developing players on that side of the ball. And now you add selfishness to that. I mean, selfishness will unravel a defense quicker than anything else. And I just think they have so many issues on that side of the ball. And they've recruited too well for that to happen, I, I think. I think UNC fans have a right to be disappointed about where their program is right now. But because of, you know, they've been able to get out there and recruit but those guys, at least on one side of the ball, are, are not performing at all. I mean, against FBS teams this year, their last three games, they're allowing 260 rushing yards per game. Mm. I would love to have that for us. Yeah. I would love that to be our, our productivity on offense. You know, so it's interesting because you and I are both active on Twitter. You and I are both walking these Hokey Nation streets, and we see and hear what's going on. You're very well connected. And you touch on a subject that's really trending right now. And it was trending last year in Twitter spaces with UNC. And I'm not here to start the spot, but this is a podcast where we're going to keep it real. There is a growing sentiment that's been going on for the last three years that despite all this 757 and VA and North Carolina talent, all these four sprinkled in with some five stars, UNC, despite having a very good quarterback in Sam Howe, has underachieved. Mm -hmm. um, they are getting a lot of guys that are highly touted. And I watched them against Florida and a and and they were getting gashed, and Florida a and were missing 25 players. Exactly. Okay, so I said it's the first game of the season. They had to move the game up. Then against Appalachian State, they gave up 40 points in a quarter. I mean, I don't think Appalachian State has scored 40 in a game all year, but they did mm -hmm. it in that one quarter against North yeah. Carolina's defense. And this is the issue with North Carolina football. After that game, which they won by two late because Appalachian State just overthrew a pass to a wide open receiver. That's the only reason Carolina won. Mac Brown's dancing in the locker room and celebrating. And I have no issues celebrating a win, but when you just gave up 60 points, like it's all, it. yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> you've got to hold those players accountable. Like, if, if you want to be a good football program, you can't consider beating Appalachian State by two and giving up 40 points in one quarter to be a successful day. Like, I, I don't feel like their players are being held to a high enough standard once they get in there. I think they get in there and they all have four stars or even a few cases, five stars next to their name. But there's nothing to, in that program that brings them back down to earth once they get there. When you dance with your players in the locker room, when they play that poorly, that's in effect telling them that's okay. That's an acceptable performance. That's a good point. That's a good point because from a from a player perspective, um, I mean, there were games we won by 20 and I knew we didn't play well. And the uh -huh. coaches let us know yep. when we had film review the next day when we were doing our um, walkthrough and film review. You know, so Tech fans are probably watching this, knowing our history, and we've underachieved at times. I mean, obviously that's a well-documented, but, North Carolina, for some reason, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, we they've been our best medicine. The hurricane game, which the weather, ironically, is a hurricane, and there's rumors of them maybe moving it, keeping it. We'll see. We're recording this on a Wednesday night. Um, but with that being said, you know, for us defensively, we've been great, but our offense has not been great or consistent. Um, we have not been able to consistently run the ball against – Every opponent we played, um, except for the Boston College game, a lot of that came when Keyshawn King broke off that 60-something yard run. Uh, Malachi Thomas, we don't know. I, I'm sure when this show airs, we'll know if he's a go or not. We definitely could use him mixed in with King because together that's a great punch. But Grant Wells, you know, offensively, Tech has always been a program minus a few teams where offensively that's been the, the unit that struggled and not being consistent and we relied on defense and other components of our football team this year is no different despite the changing in coaching staff and player personnel um with that being said with our inability to be consistent on the ground game um the misses in the passing game grant wells who's shown flashes but again is not playing his best football could it be a situation this weekend with the weather being it, that you know with the rain and wind could this be a situation where Tech could play well against UNC? Could this be the best medicine? Because um, this is not Pittsburgh. 
This is yeah. not a team like Pittsburgh or teams like that where they're going to come up and play physical. I see the same tape you do, and um, UNC is not playing great defensively, but Virginia Tech is not playing great offensively. So what are your thoughts about that matchup? I think just just watching them play against Notre Dame last week, and I had seen Notre Dame play two times already this year, so I know a lot about Notre Dame. As soon as Notre Dame started hitting them in the mouth, they folded. And the worse it got for them, they just got frustrated, started committing 15-yard penalties, punching guys in the head, yelling at each other on the sideline. They're a team that if you give them a little push, you can knock them off the cliff because they, they're just not a mentally tough, strong football team, or at least not a mentally tough, strong defense. Uh, I think it's important for Virginia Tech to not necessarily come out and take a lead or a big lead or anything like that, but just be right there with them in the second half. The longer you pressure these dudes, the more chances it is they're going to fold. Now, if you let them get up 14 nothing or something like that, and then you've got to be one-dimensional and they have confidence and things like that, I can see it being a landslide. But I also think if certain things go in Virginia Tech's favor in this game, that I don't know that North Carolina has the, the mental toughness to respond to it. And I normally don't say that about football teams, but yeah. I've seen it enough out of UNC throughout the years now, especially since Matt came back. And you saw it for Miss Texas teams, too. Mm. I mean, this is a trend with, with Mac Brown's teams at this point. It's not necessarily a UNC thing. It's probably more of a Mac Brown thing at this point. Yeah. And I like yeah. Mac. He's a good guy. But I, ju I just don't think he's handling his teams well these days. So I, I think I think it's important to stay in the game. And then when the second half rolls around, you know, throw a punch and get them on their heels because there's a good chance that they mentally fold at that point. They're just not mentally strong. Yeah, yeah. And, and I just want to say this, Chris, thank you for jumping on. I know you got to jump off here in a second, but I do want to ask you this. Um, when it comes to the offense, um, I'm, I've am i taken on the mindset this season, even if we were three and one, mm -hmm. and even if we had beaten West Virginia to be patient, because I've talked to Pry, I've talked to J.C. Price and Pearson, John Boleyn. I know a lot of guys on that coaching staff, a lot of players, um, they want to win. Um, and and they're going to do their best, obviously, as corny as that sound. They are. They're going to go hard. Um, but at the same time, they're going to have to scratch and claw for every mm -hmm. win they get. They are. Um, with that being said, um, do you think offensively, and it's not even about the run game, I, I just feel like, you know, when you're when you're a desperate football team, sometimes that can kind of be your benefit. And I'm not saying like just like play like you're playing Madden or, or in c 2 a <laughs> But what I'm saying is I've, I've taken on the mindset like, okay, I'm seeing some of these other teams be a little bit more innovative, maybe a, a halfback toss pass, a double reverse. Uh, do you think we need to, even though like we can't even hit on simple plays, do you think yeah. with this kind of team, we need to kind of open it up a little bit more? I mean, yeah. I'm not, I, yeah, I just, I'm I mean, just curious. As far as the running game, like I, I think, at some point, you want to run one of those sweep motions, you got to hand it off to the jet man at some point, right? I mean, four games in, you haven't done it yet. And the, the only ball carriers for Virginia Tech this season have been tailbacks and the quarterbacks. Um, like, if I'm North Carolina defensive coordinator, I'm saying, listen, if they go on one of those jet motions, ignore it. And if they happen to hand it off to the jet man, then that's on me and, and we'll reset. But they haven't done it all year, so assume that they're not. That makes us easier to defend, right? So you're not – the offensive line has been bad and the tight ends have been bad in the run game. There's no getting around that. But I don't think they're getting any help from that standpoint either. But uh, it's imperative that this team run the football. It's imperative that Virginia Tech football in general, whatever year it is, run the football. That should be the – that's got to be the identity of this football program. Uh, I mean, if Mike was on here, he'll tell you. when Back in the day when he got to hand it off to Lee Suggs and, and Andre Kendrick and Shiron Stith and it's second and seven – and then you can do anything on second and short, man. You can hand it off to him again for a first down. You want to cork that play action to Andre Davis on second and short. I mean, it's just a, you can't live in third and long. No, no. offense can live in third and no. long. I think, I think last year quarterbacks were something like uh, offense has only converted like 18% of anything third and eight or more. So you got you to gotta be able to do better in the running game. I, I, I wonder if like Joe Rudolph coming from an offense – it was all almost all under center, and even their shotgun formations, the quarterback was always lined up at pistol depth rather than shotgun depth, which mm -hmm. led, led to a mesh with the running back that was closer to the line. 
And now Rudolph's the running game coordinator in an all shotgun offense. So you got to wonder if there's some, if everybody, like the coaches are still getting used to each other. So if the coaches aren't used to each other and aren't operating at 100% efficiency yet, then how could the players be? Yep. Yep. And that's a great point about the coaches because I just think sometimes people look at it like it's a PS5 game. You plug it in yeah. and you put your controller, you link it up with the system and the game console and you sub and you just, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to say they don't deserve criticism or, you know, recommendations or need to be held accountable. I just think that you have to be patient and give this thing time and understand what he was left with, meaning pride in the coaching staff. And I feel like the defense is going to be our calling card this year. I just think the offense knows they need to play better. I think the run game is not about effort. I, I look at it, it's more so about the offensive line right now. I played it <laughs> for a long time. It they You're not going to see the Bill Collins and Janelle DiNapoli's out there right now. But at the same time, they have enough talent where they can play better. What I see is hesitancy. I see yes. them being hesitant, not knowing sometimes the same guy, two guys are hitting the same guy and then the other guys running free. That is chemistry, and that yes. is knowing your system. I came into Tech in 94, and uh, we had a guy by the name of Gary Tranquil, a very well-respected offensive guru who coached the NFL, and he ran a very complex system, and it was very difficult for me as a red shirt. I'm glad I red shirted. Maurice, um, who was in Bustle his junior year, had a Heisman-like season, and Tech's offense, still this day, record-wise, was one of the best offenses in Tech history. It was him and Charlie Ward that were, like, two of the best three quarterbacks in the country as far as efficiency goes. Yes, and I was recruited, and Maurice, they had posters, and he was up for the Heisman. He was a dark horse. Gary Trenko came in the senior year, and he was not the same quarterback. He had moments because he was that good, but against UVA, senior day, home game, he had six turnovers. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know if he had six, but the offense had six or seven total. Um, the following year, Bustle came back. I enjoyed Bustle's offense. It was it was it was simplistic, but it made sense. Tosses, end of rounds, play action, run the ball, and you saw what that did for Mike um, and other quarterbacks like him. So and and, and Bustle yeah. could adapt to his personnel too. Like Bingo. with, with Drucken Miller, you know, you could throw it down the field. Other years, like the DeShazo year in '93 when Bustle was here, they were kind of run and shoot. I mean, he could have, it was kind of, it was the same offense, but he could adapt it every year to the personnel that he had. Very good offensive yeah. coordinator. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, look again, this is a talking all things tech, but you can look around the ACC, look down the street um, at UVA. And I've said this before. I thought Brendan Armstrong should have left because he has that five new offensive linemen, a yeah. new coach, new coaching staff and new offensive coordinator. So Again, it happens to everybody, even a guy like that who had a record year his uh, previous season. So, yep. man, Chris, thanks again for jumping on, man. This was a lot of fun. I know you're a busy man. How can the fans keep up with you? Uh, what do you guys got going on? I, you, you guys got a podcast. I yeah. watch and subscribe to it. And you also have your articles. How can they follow you? Uh, TechSideline.com is the site. I'm Chris Coleman, TSL on Twitter. Um, two podcasts next week. Uh, hopefully, this is a week to get the offense turned around, man. You'll never have another better opportunity than this week. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we got uh, to. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, we're all having a nice conversation on Monday. Yeah, hopefully, man. Hopefully, because we got a tough stretch. So we let's get this W, man. Yep. Thanks again, Chris. Man, we appreciate you, man. Yeah, buddy. Uh, for jumping on. Yep, yes, take sir. Care, take man. care. All right. That's Chris Coleman at Tech Sideline, uh, managing editor, and also um, the guy that you know. He's an analyst. He's a guy, and it's not just football. It's basketball. Baseball. He's a guy that I, I really love talking to. A uh, friend of mine. I've been talking to him for years, man. So we're getting ready to bring on the guest, man. Before I do that, I just want to read this quick promo from one of our great sponsors, Hall of Fame Sports. Um, they put on the biggest show in Cooperstown featuring all of the baseball Hall of Famers. They do multiple events in New York and New Jersey with basketball and football. Some of the biggest stars in pro sports all across the country. Like and follow them and subscribe to their social media at Hall of Fame Signings and stop by the website for all future signings and updates. If you can, can't can make it to one of the events, send in your gear. Send in whatever you want to get signed, and they'll get it signed for you, man. Check them out, halloffamesports.com, man. So, again, Mike is not with us today, um, but the show goes on. I talked to him before um, we could get this thing going, and um, we are going to get this thing going with two 
of the best to ever do it, ladies and gentlemen. For those listening on Spotify, you can't see them, but I got one of one, actually two of the best safeties in Virginia Tech sports football history. My guy, DJ Parker from the great program of Phoebus High School and Willie Powell, two of the best safeties, ladies and gentlemen. Both of these guys have been on the Victory Life Legacy Spotlights. And again, Mike couldn't join us, but he was like, yo, tell the fellas I said, what's up, man? So we're going to have a great second segment, man. Um, Starting next week, this segment will be sponsored by Hokie Way and the Commonwealth NIL, man. So Willie, DJ, what's going on, man? How y'all doing? My my OGs, what's happening? Yeah, Yeah, man. This is, hey, look. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, listen on Spotify. For those watching our Vic 757 YouTube channel, let me just say this. Um, Virginia Tech football brotherhood is deep. It runs, we've had, since we started this show, we've had D'Angelo Hall on. We've had some great people. Um, you know, a DB, Nathaniel, a DB. I can't even name him. Like Antonio Freeman, and Andre Davis. So many guys we want to get on. But these two people right here, they came after me. Willie was there one year with me. When he came down from Northern Virginia, I followed DJ at Phoebus because him and the DB and those guys started winning championships. They had those great battles between Hampton and Phoebus. Next thing I know, I see DJ at Clemson getting the pick six to set the tone. And yeah. now, now these guys are on the show, man. And I enjoy watching y'all play like a lot of Hokie Nation, man. DJ, how you doing? DJ's up here with me in Northern Virginia. Willie, where are you at? Uh, I'm in Dallas, Texas, but not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and I had a chance to connect with your beautiful wife and your family at the spring game, man. Yes, um, sir. Yeah, we hung out, yeah. man. Got some of that barbecue up in yeah. the uh, old indoor. I don't even know what that is, man. There's so many yeah. new buildings popping up, man. <laughs> it yeah. is, it is. <laughs> but Hokie it, Nation, man. Hokie Nation wants to hear from y'all, man. So, um, DJ, man, you and I talk on Twitter. Um, we talk a lot. And uh, you have great insight. For those that follow DJ Park on Twitter, he just types stuff and it's like, boom, he just, he keep, he's just on to the next one. He ain't going to debate with you. He ain't going to go back and forth. He just tweeted and he keep on going. Um, but he's a great, he's a great follow because he's very insightful. He just hits you with a one liner. Um, I know you follow tech and let's talk about tech before we talk about your times at tech. Um, I know the fans want to hear you. DJ, what are your thoughts so far on this season and, and, and the coach prior hire and, and what you've seen so far? Yeah, yeah, man. I I think you know we're we're right where we we're supposed to be in our first year. First, you know, first year with the coach. A little disappointed in in, in the ODU loss. I, I think we kind of played down to the competition a little bit. Um, you know, hostile environment down there, and I think that was a wake up call. But you know, it was good. You know, bounce back next week. You know, got got on the board, got a win. You know, and we followed up with another one. Um, I think we gave the the West Virginia game away. Uh, you know, I, I yes. think we didn't make enough winning plays. There were some opportunities there for us to capitalize on. We didn't do that. But that's suspected with a young team. You know what I'm saying? I think we're trying to figure out how to win. And um, those guys will, will continue to do that, you know, as, as as the years progress. So, you know, we just got to stick with them. I think we just got to be patient, you know. But um, it's just going to be a week-by-week thing to where those, those guys are going to gain confidence. And um, I think we'll be all right, man. I think we're going to finish pretty strong. Yeah. I agree. I agree, DJ, man. You know, it's tough because uh, we just had Chris Coleman on from Tech Sideline. Um, He's been covering Tech since you, me, Willie, all of us played. And he's a young dude, but he covered Tech and he's got he has a great column and he they have a podcast themselves, him and Will Stewart. And I told him right before you guys jumped on what I grew up on when I played Tech at Tech. And then when you guys came after me is the one thing about you guys is you made game winning plays. Like, mm-hmm. Willie, I remember you won a few tech teams that won at Syracuse. Yeah. And people talk about Mike's run, but you had three picks yeah. in one game. DJ, yeah. everybody talks about Clemson, but you, after I left, y'all went to the ACC. You and Macho and Eddie Royal that night put on a mm-hmm. clinic, yeah. you know, special teams and defense, true beamer ball. Like, those were game-winning plays. Macho's, Harris's kickoff return. Eddie Roy's punt return. He probably should have had three that night. Three, yeah. And DJ, you and Macho were hitting the Clemson receivers like they owed y'all cash app money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, it was crazy. Yeah. You know, Willie, um, mm-hmm. you know, what are your thoughts so far, man, on, on, on the pry hire? The, you know, you've been around the program. You and I were there mm-hmm. for the spring ball. Yeah. And I want you, you yeah. know, what do you think so far, man, your impressions this early part of the season? 
You know what? I think it is going to be a work in progress, man. DJ hit it right on the head, and I'm sure, you know, all of the, the, the beat writers and the pundits, they all have their uh, opinions. But for us being in the building and being in those locker rooms, we understand what it does take to win, and not just win, but win down there, right? The type of athlete that we're used to seeing down there and the mindset of that athlete that needs to be a Hokie. And I think we're starting to get back into that. Coach Pry has a good base. I mean, that Penn State crew that he had, man, I mean, I'm in Dallas. So I know he coached Michael Parsons. And I was fortunate to go see Penn State versus Memphis. I took my son to the Cotton Bowl that year. And I had been to the Iron Bowl. I went to go see Bama Auburn that year. I went to Oklahoma Baylor that year. I saw a lot of games. But Michael Parsons was the best football player I've seen the entire year. And I saw Heisman Trophy winners, Bolitnikoff winners. I've seen all of them. And so I see the type of effort and attitude that those guys play with when Pry was leading that defense. And in my mind, I'm like, okay, that's the type of edge and attitude we need down in Blacksburg because that's going to matter to those kids. When you can hang your hat on something. And I felt like, you know, you don't want to talk about the past, but I felt like we didn't hang our hat on anything. We didn't have an identity. And that's unfortunate because there's nothing to say we want this type of athlete. We want this type of recruit. I want this type of coach. And so we were struggling to find that identity. And as with any walk in life, if you don't have an identity, it's very difficult to be successful consistently. And that's what I saw. And what we're seeing now is that those guys are starting to round into it. See my little one back here trying to get in. Right? <laughs> they're, they're, uh, they're trying to round into that form. And so Coach Pry has the right maker. You know, and he was very blunt and honest with us at the spring game. I'm sure you got it to talk to him in the corner. I talked to him for a little bit, talked to Coach Cheetah, talked to Pilo, talked to Price, talked to all those guys down there. And all of them said, we're building. Right. We got to build. The spring was good for us. Kind of let us weed out the ones who don't need to be here. Focus on the ones that want to be here, bringing this freshman crew and then start developing. But, man, um, I like you. I was disappointed to ODU. And you know how I go, man. If they play on a Friday night and Tech don't win, it's going to mess up your whole weekend. Right. <laughs> and so last week, you know, I got people texting me from West Virginia. You know, it's a couple guys live out here. They West Virginia alum trying to bet me stuff. And I'm sitting there like, look, man, I just want to see a good game. And then I got to turn around and put on a good face for my son's games. And so, you know, when, when they don't win, it hurts me to my heart. And so um, I'm accepting of the fact that it is a work in progress, but I feel like the right personnel is leading the group. And I feel like that identity is going to round in the form. And Lord willing, he gets the right athletes in there, starts to really hit Virginia hard and, uh, and develop the talent. And those guys will show up when it's game time, man. Yeah. No doubt, man. Just a little quick note. Danny Noakes joins us, man. He's a little yes. late, man, but he's on for those. Uh, Danny Noakes is my co-host for the Victory Life Legacy podcast. Also, 106.7 DC, the fans own. Actually, we got a segment coming this weekend. So DJ and Willie, this is my guy. You probably seen me with him oh, on yeah. Twitter and Facebook. Danny Noakes. Mm -hmm. Danny, what's good, man? Hey, gentlemen, Willie, DJ, what's going on, fellas? It's great to be here. It's great to hear yeah. from you guys. What's up, Danny? Yes, sir. Yeah, Love it. Two, two of the greats, Danny. Trust me, two of the greats. I know you already know. I know. About oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so, so DJ, um, I want to, I want to go. I want to get get your thoughts on this, man. Um, you know, I talked about how you know you were one of the great safeties, part of that great DBU legacy. Um, you were always humble, but when you were on the field, you were a dog. When you hear Willie talk about that mindset, I always like to hear players like you and um, Willie and other guys that come on this show talk about the mindset because fans hear that. And I tweet sometimes we need more goons and we need more dogs. And sometimes yeah. fans say, wait a minute, do you mean delinquents? I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't mean someone getting DUIs and getting, I mean, fights. I, I, right. But there's an edge, right? There's an edge yeah. because mm -hmm. if you ever notice, I know DJ, DJ is chill. Like he he loves, he he bikes, he cycles, he, he, he gets <laughs> on his deck. He is a, yeah, he is a sipping he, wine. He, yeah, he is, you know, but when he plays, you know, yeah, you know what I'm saying, Willie? But when yeah, he played, yeah. you knew he was there. So, Willie, I mean, excuse me, DJ, speak about that dog mentality that you see or that you play with um, and, and what Willie's talking about with the pride culture he's trying to create with the lunch pail. Yeah, it's, it's just the, the just coming to tech. I just, you just, you're, you're taught the, the standard, right? So, give you an example, you know, with Willie, you know, I, Willie, you probably don't know this, man, but uh, I, I played corner my freshman year and uh, Coach Whammy, and Coach Beamer said, hey, we're going to move you to free safety. I said, okay, cool. So I'm trying to learn the free safety spot. So I went straight to Coach Wimmer. I said, I need all of Willie, Willie's cut-ups, like everything, all, all plays Willie. So yeah. you, man, I, I learned how to play the position, watching your cut-ups um, every every single day during the summer, all, along with Vinny Fuller. I watched you guys, like, all the time. So so yeah. thank you for that, OG. But 
it's just the standard, right? So soon, the first day you step on campus, you know, and, you know, in the D block room, you know, I had guys like Eric Green, um, I had guys like Jimmy Williams, um, you know, Vinny Fuller, um, you know, those are the guys who are telling me, you know, hey, this is how this is this is how we get down, you know, in this room here, and we're gonna play to a level, right? So they set that tone for me early, and um, it's just you know just holding each other accountable, you know what I'm saying? So. You know, and in just, you know, the upbringing coming from the 757, you know, you always got to fight, you know, um, you know, Friday nights, they, you know, you couldn't couldn't take a day off. So, you know, you kind of bring that as with you, you know, at the same time. And um, it's just kind of just holding everyone accountable, you know, looking at your brother, letting them know that, hey, man, I got your back. You can trust me. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to make the play. I'm going to be there, you know. And even when, you know, Coach Foss always said, you know, we're going to bend, but we ain't going to break. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So, you know, when you got to, you know, you got to bow your neck a little bit, you know what I'm saying? And, hey, you got to look each other in the eye and say, who's going to make this play? You know, if you ain't going to make it, I'm going to make it for us, right? So that's just the mentality we always had. And, uh, you know, it, it, it resulted in us winning a lot of games and, you know, going to a lot of hostile environments and pulling out some W. So, you know, that, that was just the whole mentality. Now, I think this young group will, will, will soon learn that. Um, but, you know, I think Willie hit on a great thing. I think we have the right – nucleus in the building right with coach pry his background and i love what he's done as far as the guys he's brought on staff right so you have prelude you have jc price they brought back glad they brought the og back um we got xavier db in the building you know so guys who been in those hey, trenches, winslow yeah yeah exactly. yeah, yeah Jerome. Yep. been in the trenches and been in that environment know what it is to be a hokey in the standard that we try to play they can they can teach that and coach that and but then also just now all the alumni are coming back now, right? So the yes. guys can talk to us, and we can we can you know just be there for them, you know, and and support the support this young team and get back involved in the program. So um, I'm excited, um, and I just know as time goes on, you know, those guys will have that chip on their shoulder. Um, <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna get tired of seeing you know hearing about Clemson and North Carolina. I'm like, nah, man, forget that. You know, it's it's Virginia Tech. So they'll, they'll get back to where they want to be. Danny, did you have a question for uh, Willie? Um, did you want to ask him, or you uh, you got one? Yeah, well, I was I was just gonna say, but for both DJ and Willie, I I know a lot of fans are gonna tune into this this podcast, and they're gonna they're just gonna love hearing you guys talk about tech players from from different generations. You know, learning from one another, uh, bonding with one another, and and I just I I I as as someone that went to tech and obviously has covered tech from a from a journalistic standpoint, it's amazing. It's really cool. Um, so I, I'm kind of just curious from both of you, you know, as as they go through this this transformative time with the program and I would I would caution fans to be patient. Right. Um, wh what would you tell some of the players that are, you know, there, there's obviously a lot of veterans in the in the locker room right now, like Dax and 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 other guys that have played for different regimes <clears throat> now within within the tech program, uh, but also young guys that are just now coming in and they're just getting introduced to Brent Pry. How how do you kind of address the the differentiation there and and as it is a trying time as you go through the season, you know, what do you say to these guys? I'll let you lead with that, Willie. Okay, no doubt. No, so um, it's been a unique time for a lot of those athletes, right? You got to think some of them are playing on a COVID year, right? And so mm. you know, it's a lot of things going on to where they would have experienced maybe the end of Beamer, and then all of Fuente, and then the beginning of Coach Pry, and so. What I would, if I was in a locker room and I'm a Dax Holyfield and I've been there and I've seen the tail end of Beam's career and whatever that looked like, and then I'm seeing all of Coach Fuente's career, and then I'm seeing um, the beginning of Coach Pry's uh, tenure, I'm saying that the work is undefeated, right? If one thing I learned in every regime, the work is undefeated, gang, we can't worry about what other people are saying. We got to focus on us. If we're going to be as good and as dominant as we know we can be, we got to focus on us. How are we going to play this defense? How are we going to play this offense? How are we going to do on the special teams? But you got to focus when everything around you gets crazy. That's when things hunker down. DJ hit it on the head. They went to a hostile environment. Clemson came out, walked the dog on the boards. We went to a hostile environment. AM came out, walked the dog on the boards because we knew regardless. Oh, man, they, they can't throw the ball. They can't. Everybody came together. We went out there. We made winning plays, like OG said, and it was time to go to work. And so if I'm Dax, if I'm an older guy, then I'm going to say, look, the work is undefeated and they're leading by example. If I'm a younger guy, a freshman, you know, a redshirt guy that's, you know, now being counted on to make plays, I don't know any better, right? So all I know is the work. You know, it's almost like the scenario when we had to throw some young guys in the national championship game, right? We had to put mm -hmm. L.A. 
Brian Yell in the game. You don't know any better. Peter Ward, who cares? Chris Winkie, he's 35 with three kids. Doesn't matter. Let's go play ball. You know what I mean? And so when you're young, you don't know any better. Just go play. When you're old and you do know better, older and do know better, then you say the work is undefeated, man. Like football is it, it's it's a grown man's sport. Any way you slice it. And it takes, you know, Jay-Z said it best. Men got to do men thing for men's salaries. So you got to go out there and work. And I'm telling you, if I'm Dax, if I'm some of the older guys, I'm saying the work is undefeated. How are we going to right this ship now? I can't worry about what happened in the past. I can't even look ahead to what's going to happen next year when we get said four-star or five-star, whoever else is committed. I'm worried about right now. This is my senior year. And the one thing Bud Foster, I know all these guys understand this, Bud said we have to make the senior year for that senior class the best they can make it because it is mm. not guaranteed they're ever going to play again. And so my focus as an underclassman was to make – Corey Bird senior year, his best year ever. To make Corey Moore senior year, his best year ever. To make Ben Taylor senior year, doing my part. I can't worry about anybody else. What am I going to do to make sure he has his best senior year? Because football after that year is not guaranteed. And when you walk around with that mentality and that mindset, man, you're going to go to work. Like practice now, I tell my boys now, man, practice is where you earn it. Anybody will run out to enter the sand, man. But are you going to get up mm. at six and go put in work? Are you going to go watch film like DJ in the summer, breaking down old cutups? We might not even play the teams, but he's looking at the scheme. How does he match in it? That stuff right there, that's a different level of confidence and thinking I'm going to be a contributor. And if we got the right guys in the building like I think we have and we're going to get more, then they're going to take on that mindset. But it's going to take those leaders saying the work is undefeated. It's going to take the young guys saying, I don't know any better. Show me the way. Or I'm going to step up and be a leader. Definitely. And then I want to back on Go ahead, go ahead, DJ. Go ahead. No, I want you to talk. I want to piggyback on what Willie said. I I think, give you an example like Dax, right? I think – that's can be he can be that voice, you know what I'm saying? So Willie, you you were that voice, right? Through through your years, right? You see how passionate how he's talking, right? Like you can follow a guy like that, you know, because you see how much it means to him. Um, I know early in my years, my freshman year, Jim Davis, big Jim Davis was that voice, right? Mm-hmm. He said that he t- like Willie he hit it on the head. Jim said, "Hey, this is my senior year, and I ain't going out like that, right?" And I could I, I looked at his eyes, and I could see he was serious. So me as a freshman, like, all right, I'm gonna make sure I do my part to make sure. We send our seniors out the right way. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And um, it's funny. I know we, we went and, you know, we lost. We had a tough loss to, to USC, right? Mm-hmm. And then I think we went and we had a tough <clears throat> loss to, uh, to NC State. But after that, you know, I remember, you know, Jim Davis pulling us, you know, pulling us at the practice saying, all right, that's it. We're not losing no more. And we went on and, and, and ran the table. Went beat Miami down in the Orange Bowl and yep. went on to play Auburn in the Sugar Bowl. But, you know, we lost that game. But it was just that magical season for us, right? And then moving forward, Daryl Tapp, you know, yeah. Daryl, Mr. Lunchpail, he was, he was the voice. He was the, he was the, he put the work in, like Willie said, right? You see yeah. Daryl, Daryl had the, the ankle weights on around his ankles, riding the bike to, 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 to go lift weights, you know, it's like stuff like that. It's like, Hey man, like, all right, let me go get in the weight room. Man. You right. know, right. It's that, it's that, right. setting the tone like that. But then also, you know, when, you know, when the guys like, you know, Willie and, and Jim Davis and, and Tapp say, Hey, bring it in. And they start speaking, you listen, you know. So I think a guy like Dax who's been there, he can be that voice, you know. And and when things get tough in the game and feel like we're stalling a little bit or, you know, we feel like we're about to break, I think he could be that person on the sideline can bring everybody in, calm everybody down, say, hey, let's get to work here, you know. So I hope, you know, he you know he, he has his voice and a few others follow his lead. So I think he can, he can be that for that team. You and know, DJ, I, I think – the- the, the cool I'm, no, I was gonna say that. I'm glad he I'm wait, glad wait, he mentioned wait. leadership. No, go ahead, go ahead, Willie. Go yeah. ahead. Cause I go ahead. Now, go ahead I'm I'm on I'm on the, and I'm on the same wavelength. And I think the guys that he mentioned, you know, not just myself, but the other guys who would step up and hold guys accountable, they all did make plays, mm-hmm. right? It's tough to be a leader if you ain't out there making plays and and and, and really showing the guys what it needs to look like. Because you can talk mm-hmm. all you want, but man, you know, well, well done is better than well said any day. Right. And so the guys, I mean, literally, we, we talk about it. You ask him all different types of quotes. The young man, he's going to know it's all about well done is better than well said. So when DJ said those guys are the ones that speak up, it means a lot. Absolutely. Okay, well, it's, no, no, I was just going to say, no, I'm, I'm excited because, you know, it's one thing to tweak this or be in a group chat. I'm just glad our viewers listening on Spotify, or even watching this on the Vic 757 YouTube page can see it and hear it because. I've always said when I'm on these different platforms, radio shows and things I do, leadership is one of those tangible things that, excuse me, one of those things that isn't tangible. You can't really measure it in a, in a preseason poll, but it's one of those things that you guys had. And I felt, even though we're moving forward, I felt in previous regimes after 
the Edmonds brothers and Ricky Walker and Stroman and Timony and Timony them left, Tim Settle. Mm -hmm. I felt like that was lacking. <clears throat> that leadership piece was lacking. But DJ, I want to ask you this, and Willie, you can go second. It's funny mm -hmm. you mentioned Jim Davis and Daryl Tapp because you have some fans that are going to hear this. And when I tweet about this, they say, well, you know, those guys were, those were talented. They, they were elite players. The misconception about that is, is that some of the all time great tech players, like you both, you guys were recruited, but it wasn't like you had 75. It wasn't like y'all were high profile five star Jim Davis. And a lot of these guys, yes, you have your macho Harris and your D halls, but a lot of the guys you guys have mentioned, including guys like Cam Chancellor, had one, maybe nine, ten offers, some major power five, some low end. Uh, DJ, talk about that when it comes to the culture prize getting and we're recruiting, because it sounds to me what you and Willie are saying is that it's one thing to have a guy that's a dog, but it's another thing to be a dog and be have a bite, like to be someone that really is about that action. Yeah, a lot of guys yeah. can tweak that they working hard. They can put together a mixtape doing speed, ladder drills, and they lifting. But when the lights come on, they ain't got no bite. Um, but DJ, just speak on it. You go first and and, and Willie, uh, just that dog mentality and, and, and what Pry's doing as far as the state and, and what kind of players he's trying to get. Because I want the fans to really know what that means. Yeah, you know, it's like the old saying, you know, the, the eye in the sky don't lie, right? So, you know, that, that, that film tells everything. So, you know, for me, I think people can't get too caught up in, in, in stars. You know, I, I've seen some guys who were four stars, five stars and played in the in the All-American game. But when them lights got bright, man, you know, they were pissing down their leg. You know what I'm saying? So it's, 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 it's all about putting in the work. And, you know, you, you know, I, I think tough times, you know, you know, we, 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 the, the people out who aren't, you know, cut for it. Right. And we, we've all seen it, you know what I'm saying? So it's more just going out there, just trying to hold your own, you know, going out there and scrap. I think one thing that, that made me better as a player each year, um, I competed against my brothers. Right. So I knew coming up every year, I had Macho Harris, I had Brandon Flowers, I had Roland Minor, and they're fighting for the spots as well. So I'm like, all right, if I want to get on this field, I got to beat them every day in practice. You know what I'm saying? So you kind of, you know, you know, have that competitive edge that way, right? And, you know, iron sharpened iron in practice. Mm -hmm. And again, if I'm lining up against Eddie Royal, Josh Morgan, Justin Harper, Josh Hyman every single day mm -hmm. in practice, that's all I'm going to bring the dog out of me, right? Because they're trying to embarrass me. I'm not going to let that happen, right? And I'm sure Willie had many, many, uh, you know, battles. You probably Ernest Wilford and those guys, you know, mm -hmm. battles every day in practice. So, yep. you know, I think Coach Pry, he just got to, you know, you know, I guess find his type of guys, but – at the end of the end of the day, you know, you, you know who's who's a dog and who isn't, right? When you cut that film on and they, they got that passion and you see them flying around, those are the type of players we need, right? And I think we just gotta go after the guys who wanna be with us, who want to be at Virginia Tech, right? Like we're not gonna try to go after the guys like, oh well, I got I got 25 offers. Why should I come to you? Like we want guys who want to be a part of this program and build something special, right? So I think they're gonna continue to do that. They're gonna find the players that fit their scheme and what they're trying to do. And um, I'm excited to see what the future holds for him. There, uh, before you go, Willie, are there some guys, sure. DJ, uh, and Willie, you can name some too when you go. Are there some guys that caught your eye this season on the defense that have that lunch pill uh, defense mentality or Jalen Stroman or yeah. anybody, Connor, anybody that, like, I know you can't name them all because it's tough for me to remember names now. I'm in right. my 40s. Right. <laughs> DJ, is That's anybody that, is there any, I'm just, I'm speaking for me. I'm speaking yeah, for Dwight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> DJ, <laughs> DJ, are there some guys maybe that, you know, like, hmm, yo, youngin' right there, you know, is anybody, you know, one or two players? Uh, I don't know. You can do that jersey I'm, number, you know. Yeah, I'm still learning. I, I think I like the I like the young guy like DJ Harvey, I believe. Yeah. He, he's corner. Yeah. I think he's I think he could be a playmaker, right? I think he, you know, he could be aggressive out there on the island and make some plays. So I've been keeping an eye on him. Um, but you know, overall, man, I just want to see that team just just continue to, to work, right? I, I think guys are gonna get better as as the season goes. So it's still early. <laughs> um, no one's really jumped off the off the screen, you know, to me right now. Um, it will make that statement play like, wow, you know, like I need to watch, continue to watch this kid. But I think that will come. And that's all was just, you know, as time goes on, they get more comfortable with what they're trying to do and um, just, you know, continue to build that way. But as of right now, you know, I'm excited for all of them. Yeah. Willie, is there a player? You don't have to go into those things. DJ covered all yeah. part about what prize looking yeah, for. But it, exactly. is there a player, too, that, you know, catching your you eye? Know what? 
you know, I'm I'm looking at the physicality of the secondary. Like naturally, in, you know, in my advanced years now, I realize that up front is where my eyes need to travel. But just by a DB by nature, my eyes are always going to travel to the secondary to see the communication because that's the number one thing that I'm looking for. Solid defense is a dead defense, right? And so I need looking for communication. Who's helping guys make the play before the ball is even snapped? Like that was one of the things that I knew that I was really good at was that I was told you're known by how much better you make your teammates around you. DJ just named three all-timers because of the communication and the work he put in. He helped Brandon Flowers and uh, 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 and Minor and some of the other deep macho. All those guys were able to make plays because he's literally putting them in position. Hey, watch the corner. Watch the slant. I got you back over the top. Jump that. And so what I'm looking at is what is the communication level and their confidence in the scheme that they're running? And so I'm looking at it, and I'm seeing guys make plays, the ones that are not having to think. Like, Stroh had a great game, you know, last the last time he out on the field in terms of activity level. And I love to see guys that are active. Like the passing Jalen Stroman, right? Jalen Jalen yes, yes, Stroman. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Right. And, and, the, and the, I don't like the passive DB. I don't like the passive athlete. So when DJ says, I'll see Harvey playing a little bit more aggressive, getting a little grimy, getting his hands dirty, like, I'm all for that. You know, if you're going to beat me, do it now. I don't want you to just bleed me down the field and just dink and dunk me and, and go passive. No, nah, let's be aggressive. And so those are the things that I'm looking at. And, you know, to DJ's point, it hasn't really been standoutish. I mean, the defense as a collective have, you know, stats-wise, have done some good things. I think situationally we have to be a ton better. And that's where the leadership and the film study and the guys being confident in each other's skill set is going to come out. And so situational football uh, after a turnover, how are we going to force a field goal? Right turn sevens in the threes. We need to see more of those types of mindset and activity. You know, I go to my D line. I need y'all to draw a holding call so we can get second and 20 so we can send the pressure. Like those are the things that we used to talk about on the field. Jim, JD, I need you to get a holding call. DB, I need you to draw one. So now Bud can dial up this pressure. Rover G, up G, you know, tough. Whatever we're going to run, let's make sure we can do it. So when those guys get to that level of communication, and confidence and trust, then you're going to start seeing some real defense being played down there. But until we get there, it's going to be a work in progress, and those guys are just going to basically do what's on the sheet, right? When we get to doing stuff that's off book, and I can look over at the coordinator and know exactly what he wants to call, then there's no communication needed. We're just going to run what we do. So when those guys take ownership, we'll start to see those guys jump off the page because right now it's just, hey, we're going to call this play on this first and 10 with this personnel. That's what you're going to see. So nothing's really going to be jazzy or stand out until they take ownership. Yeah, and I, I want to say this, right? You know, there was times when I remember we played and maybe the offense was stalling a little bit. We couldn't have momentum. And we all look at each other on defense and say, hey, we got to score then. Somebody got to get their hands on the ball. Yes. We need to, you know, change the momentum here, right? So now everyone's in ball hawk mode, right? You know, yeah, yeah. Trying to yeah. get the ball out or, hey, we're going to get a pick six and we're going to get it. Or – Hey, let's get a key, you know, three and out right here. Punt, put the offense in a better field position so they can punch it in, get them some confidence. Now we're playing complimentary football, right? Now we're rolling. So it's stuff like that they have to do, right? You gotta, you gotta realize the the the, the situation, like Willie said in the game, right? You know that, man, we you know, we, we can't punch the ball in right now. Hey, defense, we gotta score. We got we gotta get out to the ball, rip it out, pick, do whatever we gotta do. You know what I'm saying? So once they start thinking like that and they start realizing how to like realize the situations in the game, saying, Hey, if they're not going to make a play, we got to make this play, or vice versa. You know, the, hey, sometimes defense, yeah, we might get scored on, right? But the offense, don't worry, we're coming right back. We're going to mm -hmm. drive the yards, we're going to punch it in. We here, you know? So mm -hmm. they got to have that mindset. I think they'll get there. Yeah. Yeah, man. Good yeah, point. Dan, point Danny, point. this is why I love this part of the show, man, because yeah, I, I'm done playing. Um, but I listening to these two talk, man, you it's just, it's just, I'm getting chills, even though I got this hoodie on. It's just crazy. And it's also, it's also great, too, because, you know, DBs, and it's not just at Tech, but I'm biased. So at Tech, they built differently, Danny. Like, I remember we had D'Angelo Hall on last year for the Miami game. And that was a great show. Ray Lewis was on D. Hall, Ty Washington. It was you were on, Danny, as usual. Mm -hmm. And D. Hall talked about when he was on his visit, he went up to Ron Yale on a visit and okay. told Ron Yale Whitaker, he was like, yeah, I'm D'Angelo Hall. I'm here to take your spot. Ooh, like it was like, like it was the program with all my apps, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, daddy, go ahead. You can ask this last one before we jump into Hokie trivia. Did you have another question for him? Well, I, I mean, you, you're, if we're on the topic of, of Hokies DBs, you know, when I was in school, it was Kyle Fuller was, was the, the most recent dominant Virginia tech defensive back. And, and since then, you know, I got to, I got to watch Kendall play and, you know, it, it, you can't really see all this behind me, but I, 
I host radio in Washington, D.C. I'm a D.C. sports fan. So Kendall Fuller is someone who I watch every Sunday and, and do so at a, at a very close uh, with a very close eye, as as many of us do. But, um, you know, there's there's a lot of tradition, obviously, wrapped up in this program. And you guys were kind of talking about um, some of the guys that that are a little bit younger within the program and that are kind of working their way up. Zach McCray is is a guy that I like a lot on the the defensive mm-hmm. line there, number 56. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he he he's someone that Coach Pride talked a lot about. Um, there are also guy younger guys in the secondary too, though. So I think though at the at the end of the day, it's going to be the defense that carries this team, and yeah. and Coach Pry is is calling the plays for that. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that's fine, you know, because Grant Wells, you let him go out, you let him throw the ball around. He's got a big arm. There might be some mistakes made, but just like you guys know very well. The defense is is what needs to carry the day for the rest of the season, and I think that that's where they need to continue to build their identity around. Yeah, yeah, that's a good yeah. Point. Willie, um, you you and I played in the old Big East, you know, which basically yeah. is the new ACC minus West right. Virginia, which I right. wish they brought them. We didn't play. Well, I did play Carolina. Uh, you were yeah, a red shirt. Yeah. yeah, thank God yeah, you weren't no. part of that. Uh, that's when yeah. Matt Brown had some dogs. I had to go against Ebenezer Ekubon, Vonnie Holiday, Holiday. Greg Holiday. Ellis. Yeah. I was like, good. And we were all I all our players were sitting with you. You know, yeah. you and Andre Davis, Al Clark, uh, my homie, my quarterback got hurt. So Nick Sorison had to go. But we we lost that game on NBC. Um, but since then. Uh, you know, after you and I left, you you played after me, and then DJ and those guys came, and we went to the ACC. And since mm-hmm. 04, minus a couple of games, Virginia Tech has owned UNC. So, Willie, I'll start with you. You yeah. talked a lot, you and DJ, both about culture, mindset, preparation, mm-hmm. leadership. Virginia Tech offensively is challenged. We're not running the ball well. Grant Wells is hit or miss. Um, I know he wants to play better. He had missed on three big plays on offense. Um, mm-hmm. We didn't make game-winning plays, as I talked about earlier in the show, but it's a new week, and West Virginia's yeah. behind us. We actually want to know in ACC. Carolina, you know, there's talk of, you know, the hurricane. Last time there was a hurricane on the horizon, we went down there with Gerard Evans and Bucky and those guys. We won 34 to 6. Right. And Carolina fans blaming it on the rain, even though we played in the same conditions. Right, right. Um, yeah, so <laughs> Tech has a chance. Willie, I'll start with you. Then, DJ, you can yeah. you up next. Has a chance to go 2-0 in ACC on the road. Right. I don't think it's going to be a hostile environment, whether the weather was nice or not, because Tech will travel, even in a hurricane, to UNC. What do you think Tech needs to do? Because Virginia Tech offensively is challenged, but UNC is just as challenged on defense. Correct. <laughs> and despite Correct. all that talent they have with all the stars and all those guys that are ranked, they aren't yeah. producing on defense. That's so true. what what do you expect from Tech, or what do you think they got to do, I should say, to get that W and go 2-0 and in conference play, Willie? You know, the, the thing that I noticed, you know, have, have, having seen UNC play a couple times on, on television, is that the teams that punch back, right, you know, they, the teams that fight back, the ones that set the tone, like App State, I mean, these guys, they're going right at them, right? There is no letdown. There's no, oh, that's UNC, big brother in the neighborhood. No, it's, let's go to work. And so I think if Tech goes into that environment, with the mentality is we got to hit them in the mouth early. I'm telling you, physicality in football goes a long way. Like, it'd be great to be finesse and score 60 points a game, you know. But I'm telling you, if you look at some of the teams that are at the top of the, the rankings, while, yeah, they can put up points, man, that defense is nasty. They got some salty guys on that side of the, f- of the field that's going to put in work. And so I'm looking in those environments when we know that the offense may not have their full complement of play calling style what they really want to get because maybe not the guys to run that offense are all in the building right now right you're trying to make things work with guys that were made for a different system or different style or different setup <clears throat> so if it's me i'm saying defense and special teams naturally i need y'all to go in there and set the tone early right whether it's a big hit you know you know uh, a, a big time play a big stop uh, a block punt anything to just take a little bit of momentum and start planting seeds of doubt in unc because we've seen them fold when the, when the lights get brighter, right? We've seen them fold. And so if there's a way that we can make a big play on defense and special teams, that's two-thirds of the game that we're winning, then we just ask offense to just protect the ball, right? If we protect the ball and make it a punt back and forth affair, then we're going to come up with a play because Pry's an aggressive guy and he can scheme some things up to get in the backfield like we did against BC and make it real challenging for him. Right, because they had a good offense and a good quarterback, and they shut him down. And so that's what I would like to see, regardless of the the weather, the elements. Like you said, everybody's playing in 
I want to see the defense go in there with an edge and an attitude and, again, the special teams to go make a play, whether it's a, a big kick or a tackle for inside the 20 on kickoff and make them go 70 to go try to score. Those are the things, again, situationally, that we can win those moments. Not the whole 60 minutes. Win those moments, those pre, those key critical moments. But we can win those, man. Be out there celebrating 2-0, and right? And that's all that matters. You win your conference, you get a chance to play in the postseason. That's what matters. DJ, definitely. Well, we all know, man. We 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 run North Carolina, man. That that state's been ours, man. Come on now, you know. So that's the mindset you got to go on with it, you know. Like, yo, man, yeah, we from Virginia, but hey, this state is ours. Come on, it don't matter if it's Duke, you know, UNC, NC State, whatever, right? That's just been the tradition, right? But I truthfully, think, you no, know, you're right. Truthfully, actually, the numbers actually prove mm -hmm. your point. Since mm -hmm. joining ACC, you're actually very right about that. Definitely, yeah. definitely, man. We, you know, we don't we don't lose down there, but. I think it's just uh, all three phases of the game, right? We got to come out. One thing I want to see is just, you know, being aggressive, you know? Um, you know, I want us to open up a little bit, take a couple more shots, you know? And I, and I think that's going to, you know, open up the run lanes for us. You know, what's the kid running back? King, right? King, yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, strong, 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 strong back, <laughs> you know? So I think, you know, we got to, you know, people going to have their ears back, you know, uh, pin, ears pinned back on us, and they're going to be really aggressive with it. But if we can hit some of those, those shots down the field, that's just going to open up so much for us, right? And, uh, you know, I just want to see him come out. We, we all know the first 10, 15 plays are scripted. So, like, let's, let's dial up the best plays for our players, put them in the best situation to win, and let's execute, right? Then on defense, let's just fly around. You know, we got to fly around. You know, we first defense, hey, we need three and out. You know, easy. Set the tone. Somebody punch somebody in the mouth. Let's go. Yeah. Let them know that we're here. It's going to be a long day, right? So, it's stuff like that. And then on special teams, hey, man, we got to get back to the beam ball way. You know, we got to figure out. We got to scheme. We got to figure out how we can – you know, get some good runs, get some good field position to put our offenses in a situation to where we can just punch it in and not have to work so hard and have those long drives, right? You know, stall out so much. So I just want to see them play, you know, good football all three phases of the game, come out really aggressive, um, set the tone early. And if we do that, you know, we're sitting pretty in the conference. Hey, fellas, I got a question. Is is there a, uh, is there a young guy at the program? Because, again, I'm not as – tired or connected um, and watch it. But is there somebody like maybe in practice that's like a vertical field stretcher, somebody that, you know, maybe he's on the bench now, but if they gave him an opportunity to get on the field, they can help or bring a little bit of a dynamic, you know, like Dre Davis in his second year, like you ain't really know what you had, but dude runs 20 point something, 10 <laughs> flat something, and next thing you know, we throwing well, bombs over Baghdad. Is there somebody on the roster right now? that could do that because, now, again, like to DJ's point, if you can create explosive plays, just the threat of it would, like you said, loosen up the running lanes. And I don't know because, like I said, I haven't followed it. And obviously with the recruiting, I'm just not sure if there's anybody in the building that has uh, that. No, no. I, well, you know, Andre <clears throat> Davis was a diamond in the rough. I played with his, yeah. God rest his soul, his older cousin, Big Rich, Richard Bowen, who mm -hmm. was telling me about Andre Davis and I was telling him about Mike. So, and then they came right after us and you saw they right. made history. But, yeah. Danny, we do have uh, – I was being ready to say Cole Beasley. I got Willie on here. I'm thinking Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> what's, the, Cole, Cole, what's, the, what's, the, what's the receiver, the track guy we got? We got him and we got the well, number 85. We got Cole back. Cole, Cole, we got back, Cole came back. back. Yeah, Cole Beck came back. So I, I want to throw out a couple of names here because there are a couple of guys that came to mind when, when this question was asked. And, you know, Caleb Smith, I think, is our best receiver. I don't think there's okay. any question about that. When you go back, to, and I always go back to the spring game because I called the spring game on the radio with Mike Burnup, which was a lot of fun. But Grant Wells hooked up with Caleb Smith on two long yep. touchdowns yep. in that. And we've seen in the first three games the kind of vertical threat that he can be. So the more they can get the ball to him, the better. But another couple of guys that I've really liked are Dwayne Lofton, who I, I think is is someone that, you know, with, with a little bit more development, I think that he could he could definitely be a threat, certainly further on down the field. And then 85, Dwight, you mentioned Christian Moss is a guy Sweet. that he he's he's they've definitely taken some deep shots to him in the last two games, both against Wofford and against West Virginia. And I've been Sweet. sitting I've been sitting there watching the games with my girlfriend, who's also a hokey big football fan. And I've said that guy. When he, it, you give him another couple of years in this program to put yeah. a little bit more muscle on, he's got an NFL frame. Mm. Christian Moss does. So okay. I, I think, you know, <clears throat> he's, he's a little bit bigger and he's a little bit taller. Yeah. I think I, I love that they've been taking shots to him. They're, you know, they're just young. And, and we could say that about pretty much every unit every on this yeah. team at this point. But, you know, I think with a little bit more development, those are some guys that, and that Moss, Moss was open. Sorry, cut you off, Danny, but he was, he was. open twice. 
against West Virginia. One time mm. the DB fell down when he when it, you know I don't run routes, and the other one he ran past him and Wells missed him. Wells over both of, times. Wells, I mean, so both really times. they're hearing you. They hear you. It's okay. Just, yeah. They got to connect, and you know, you know, God bless them. I'm not going to compare him to one of the guys and Andre Davis. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's special, man. No one's man, Andre you know, Davis. No, no, because Willie, someone, anybody like Andre Davis, like they just walking around. You know what I'm saying? Well, <laughs> and from the standpoint of nobody knew who he was, you're and right, he had you're the right. athleticism. He yeah. just needed that Tony Ball seasoning, and Tony got him right. And <laughs> yes, then he did. Mike and Ricky yeah. Bussle said, "Hey, let's take advantage of this." Mm -hmm. I remember real quick. We played at Rutgers, right? Rest her freshman year. We played at Rutgers, right? It was somewhere around, it was not too distant from 9 11. And we go, uh, no, no, excuse me, it was way before 9 11. We were in, but we were in Rutgers though. And we go and we play the game. And uh, I remember Coach uh, Beamer and Tony Ball saying, we're going to see if that DB stretch pregame. First play of the game, we line up and Mike chucks it down the side, like 80 yards, <laughs> house call. And he wow. said, I guess that DB ain't stretched. The <laughs> first play of the game, like, we talking like some little league flags. That's what I do with my flag team, right? Hey, we're going to see if them kids are ready to go send my son on a deep ball so he's going to catch it. But literally, first play of the game against Rutgers, Mike rear back, launched that left-handed spiral in the first play. He said, we're going to see if that DB had a good warm-up. And, and he didn't. So Mike, that's why I was thinking if there was somebody like that. Mike did, Mike did that on Monday night against the Redskins, man. Yes, he did. <laughs> your boy you against your boys. <laughs> Thanks, you know, Daddy, I, I, didn't, I didn't want to break your heart, but when I saw Mike in the lobby, <laughs> I didn't go to the game because I, I usually go when he used to come up here where I would go and catch a game if it was a good matchup. Mm -hmm. And Mike told me in the lobby, um, I went up to see him. I used to see him when he came up here and we would spend time in the hotel lobby. He said, hey, cuz, we got something for him first play. Ooh. He told me, and I kept saying, what? He he told me, he said, if if it worked, it's going to be special. And I went home because I, I had tickets, but I, I decided not to go because it, it rained a little bit that night. And that play against uh, your boys, man, uh, yep. DG Jack, Deshaun Jackson, man, yeah. was yeah. legendary, man. Couldn't that, catch him. Yeah. yeah, but you know, yeah. Willie, that's that mindset that you and DJ talked about. Like, it's not just players, it's coaches. Like, we're going to see. It, it's funny how you can manifest something and speak it and believe it and work when you work towards it. When it's game time, it's almost easy. And um, I'm glad you were speaking and you and DJ are speaking on that because I speak on it, but it's good to hear some other guys who who played after me who understand that mindset of make sure the DB stretched or like DJ said, hey, look, we got to set the tone, we got to score because I'll be watching games. I'm like, man, we need defense to score. And it's so funny, man, um, how that was a staple of our program. Yes. And, 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 and before we get into Hokie Trivia, um, that's the point I was saying when I did my post-game review um on the on the radio the other day um is that tech against west virginia and odu two tough losses did not make game winning plays against odu they dropped four interceptions mm -hmm. four four mm -hmm. strong would have had a dorian strong would have had a pick six the other one it was tipped and we dropped it mm -hmm. those are the plays when it was they tipped. Also, dj they also dj they Parker. Muffed, they muffed the punt and we yeah we oh didn't make that play. That's a that's a mm -hmm. game changing play right there. Yep. You know what I'm yep. sure. And that's those are the game winning, game changing plays. But um we played North Carolina Saturday, 3 30. What challenge is the game on, Danny, for those watching? They're gonna be watching. Well, let, me, let, let me double check that. I want to say it was ACC network, but let me double check. Yeah, well, Vic, well, I, Vic, I want to ask you yeah. this. Vic, this is something I noticed in the game, and you know, you 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 being one of the bullies up front um when you played. We can't get dominated up front like that. You know the game's one in the trenches. We we didn't get any push, uh, offensive line. We you know we were back on our heels, getting pushed in, in the back. I mean, what what do you tell that group up front? You know, like that that can't happen. What happened in West Virginia? You know, so what's, no, what's the no. like, next game? You know, I'm not. You know, I any everybody knows my track record as a player. You know, I'm I'm, I'm I know who I was at Tech, and I know I'm well respected and well known. But I think. Even if you don't have immense talent and size and athleticism, I think it's a mindset. I think when I when I'm it's coming out October third, but I'm I was featured along with a lot of guys, media people on the ACC network doing a special on Beamer, and Andy Bitter, um, who's a beat writer for Tech for the Athletic, he said it, and it's going to be in the special. Beamer ball just wasn't great defense and special teams. It was a mentality of you scored in all three phases of the game. Mm. And the lunch pail, so funny, is me and Mike joked about this. Andre Davis as well, so many offensive players. Um, we never carried and never held the lunch pail. <laughs> I never once touched it. But here's the thing. We all had that mentality. Mm. So for me, 
um, I'm a big teddy bear officer. I'm a family man. You know, I'm, I'm I love great weather. I like to go catch the movies and be with my kids. But when I played, I was a savage. Um, yeah. And I didn't care about you. And I played against my friends and brothers from different parts of VA. I think when I look at the old line, I think there's two things going on. They're thinking too much because they're adjusting to Rudolph's system. I think when I look at them, they're missing backside blocks. They're they're running in. I said this earlier in the show. They're running into the same player on defense. They are too high. They're not playing with that aggressiveness. The other thing along with that is that, you know, they they're it's almost like it's like a great beamer saying is in, t- in controlled intelligent recklessness. Mm-hmm. They're playing too controlled and they're not being aggressive. I think when you play O line, it's one of those positions where you have to think. You got to recognize fronts. Is this an odd even? Who's got the mic? Who's got you know the will and pass protection? I think right now we got to get after it. Like I think you know with Rudolph's system, I think he's got some personnel, some helps on the way where he's going to get guys that fit more of his system. Mm-hmm. But I think even on fourth and one, it's a mindset where oh, I used to tell Coach Bustle, run behind me, behind like. Me. Like, run behind me. Like, I used to tell him in a timeout, like, after a series, even if we only had a field goal, I get on the headset, I'd be like, hey, Coach Grimes, Coach Steinspring, trust me, 43, we going here. Run behind me and Derek Smith. And I used to get, I can't even say, because this is a clean podcast. (laughs) I used to talk so much trash where, you know, I I went against some greats. I went against those guys, Gary Stills and um, Thornton from West Virginia. I went against Chris Hovan who had a great college and NFL career at Boston College, me and Derek Smith were giving him work. We were taking his pumpkin on national TV. We were giving him work, and I let him know. And, you know, it was an ugly game. And I was that dog because of the William Boatwrights, the Chris Berries, the Bill Connantys before me, the Mike Bianches. But even what I went against in 95, and then I turned around, and my reward is a 99 defense. So in five years, I went against – Jim Barron, Cornell Brown, Hank mm. Coleman, uh, yeah. Lawrence Lewis, Jeff Holland, and I turn around, J.C. Price, and then I get Nate, uh, Nate Williams, Nate and, Williams, and, and Chad Beasley, Cornell Brown, I mean, uh, Engelberger, Engelberger, Corey Moore. Yeah. So yeah. in practice, Cyrus, all and that. it's a different game, uh, DJ. We went full pads, and it was, you know, yeah. now it's, it's controlled shells. It's point who you got. Okay, if you want to practice safety, I'm all for that. But make sure when those lights come on, you got to be aggressive, man. And I think Pride knows that. I know Coach Rudolph knows it, but I think it's just those two things. It's like playing with the sense of urgency and knowing your scheme. Like Coach Grimes, I was so prepared. Mm-hmm. By the time game time came around, it was no front. I mean, I was ready for everything. And if I made a mistake, I made a mistake going full speed. If you look mm-hmm. at our offensive line, sometimes that you know, they're, you know, they they got to play with confidence. And and honestly, and we'll get into Hokie trivia, uh, but I'll say this, and, and we'll ju- I'm going to read this sponsor promo. you got to know what you're doing. So even if you practice, let's say, I don't know what they're doing now, from five to seven, that means yeah. after you shower and eat, if you, if you got your work done, go back to the facility and study again. I study. Like, you don't get all conference, and you don't become a great player by just doing it in practice. One thing I remember about Antonio Banks and Torian Gray and all those guys, they were always in the film room. Me, Ty Washington, Derek Smith, and Gennaro DiNapoli, all of us went to the league, but we will film, we will film, you know, guys. We we watch video. I took takes home. This is back VCR takes with you put it in there. This is not the digital <laughs> stuff. You know what I'm saying? But right. I studied. So I hope those guys are studying. Cause I, I I met a lot of them this spring and summer. They want to be good. But it's it's when you play old line, man, it you know, contrary to popular belief, you gotta be a dog too. And that's that lunch pail mentality that we carry um on offense. And funny thing is, is that I don't know, you know, for those listening on Spotify, you can't see it. These three links right here, oh, I still yeah. carry it, right? You remember that, Willie? Yeah. I still yeah. have these. They had them from in the Coach lockers, Bustle. All the old linemen. Don't be the you, yep, link, you never is you 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 you're strong as your weakest link. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I still this is from 1995, bro. Look at that, you know what man. Saying? Look at that. Real That's talk, amazing. This is 19 Willie know about with 1995 yep. to 99. I had this, bro. Yep. So yep. forged great, in Blacksburg. That's great insight. That's yeah. great insight, yeah. man. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's it should be insight. it should be easier these days to study, right? Because now everything's on the tablet. They on the phone. Yeah. On the That's phone. Right. 
Back in the day, you had actually going to the office with the clicker. Yeah, the clicker. Right. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Right. And, and, and I didn't I didn't have a whip. I wasn't like Marcus. Marcus had uh, you know a escalate. I had to catch a ride or <laughs> give my girlfriend right. now my wife her Corolla, or get my room. Right. Right. And I lived in Fox Ridge, so you lived in Fox Ridge. But I was like, oh, right. my God, oh bro, man, I can't pick you do. up. You know what I'm saying? But look. Right. Um, that's a great question, man. Um, yeah. let me read this promo to one of our great sponsors, man. Alexandra Restaurant Partners, once again, in the second year, sponsor um, the Vic 757 show. ARP was formed to manage restaurants, including High Tide Lounge, Touchdown Wings and Burgers, Palette 22, and many other restaurants in the DC area and in Orlando. They were formed in 015, 2016, 2018 to give you projects and opportunities to build one goal in mind is to be the best in the nation. Not the biggest, achieving in operational excellence, leading them with integrity and being transparent. Visit their site at www.alexandrarestaurantpartners.com to learn more about careers, private events, to sign up for offers. Great restaurants in Alexandria and in the DMV. Shout out to my guy, Wynn Sheridan, um, who is sponsoring us for the second year with his business partners. So, guys, we are now mm-hmm. part, we are now at the legendary, and Danny, this is your first time. <laughs> this is hokey trivia. So for the record, we've had guys come close. Chris Ellis got three out of four. Cornell Brown got three out of four. Ooh. Orion Martin, who was on here a few weeks ago, um, he did pretty well, but nobody has gotten four out of four. Not one wow. guy. Um, you know, many times D Hall and other guys, uh, Greg Boone, they went over. They might have gotten one. Okay. So we're going to see. So Danny, you're taking Mike's spot. So I'm going to ask you, Willie and DJ, no cheating. I'm looking right, at right. your hands. All right, right here we right. go. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> um, Willie, I'll start with you first. Talk to me. Which Virginia, t- so I'll go Willie, DJ, Danny, and then um, we'll see who's right. And then we got three more after this one. Which Virginia Tech Hokies football team holds the rushing yard yardage record with 500 yards in a game? So this is a particular team. All right. Was it the 2011 Hokies led by Logan Thomas? Or was it B, the 1993 Hokies led by Mari Shiseijo? Or was it C, the 1995 Hokies led by Jim Drunkenmiller? Or was it D, the 2003 Hokies led by Brian Randall? This team had 500 yards rushing in the game, which is a all-time Hokie record. I got D, baby. Who you got? I got D because it wasn't that. That was Emo and Hume, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. That's why I gave you the quarterback so to help. I'm giving you a little bit of help. Okay. So you're saying you're saying it's D. So um, I'm just writing down. Willie's saying Thank D. You. So again, it's 2011 Hokies led by Logan Thomas, or was it 93 led by uh, <clears throat> Maurice Sasejo, or was it the 95 Hokies led by Jim Drunkenmiller, or was it DJ the 03 Hokies led by Brian Randall? So I, I was, dang, that's tough. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go B ninety with the ninety three squad. All right, DJ is going B. All right. I know, Dan, this is before your time, but it's hokey trivia because I've been having <laughs> questions from the sixties and seventies. You know what I'm saying? We gonna we, hey, what you got? What you got? Ninety three. I'm going no, I'm going I'm going to go with D. I'm going to go with Randall because as as Willie was talking about Mike Emo, I remember the Mike Emo days and and they might have been short lived, but I remember how effective. Hey, chill out I, with the puns, man. You saying short, my boy Mike short. Come on now. He did play. He, what? Listen, he did play. At Ro- he did play at Robinson, which is a rival of my high school up in Chantilly. So what can I say? No, I'm, no, I'm no, bound to no, take no. some shots here and there. Take that oh, shot, Danny. Back. Take that shot, man. Don't let he was Willie a great talk running back. I love. Hey. I was a huge Mike Emo fan, by the yeah, way. I, know, I really man, was. Legit. And and honestly, 2011 though, Logan Thomas, David Wilson, that definitely. <clears throat> I, I I was at a handful of those games, so I remember how the, good that they were. But I don't think I remember Wilson ever going for five. That crew ever going for five hundred plus. It was a team. It was a team. Yeah, right. It was a team. Right. right. So okay. I'm, I'm, I'll go so, three. I'll go D. Okay. So the correct answer is by Phoebus Finest. DJ Parker, he picked uh, B, right? Oh, the ni- the yeah. 93 Hokies led by Maurice Shiseijo, one of the highest scoring offenses that year, rushed for 500 yards against Pittsburgh Dang. in a win. Wow. Um, coming in a close second was the 95 Hokies against Akron, Jason Taylor's team, in which we rushed for 453 yards. 
So yeah, mm. it's crazy, right? That '93 oh. team was loaded. I see you, um, DJ. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> DJ. Oh, so who, 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 who are the lead backs right there, OG? Yeah, so for '93 touchdown, yeah. Tommy Edwards. Okay. Um, um, Renal White, Dwayne Thomas, and Brian Edmonds. Brian Edmonds. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Okay. Brian okay. Edmonds. That's back when we used the fullback. We used to do the dive play. Right. Um, right. Touchdown. Right. Tommy had a bunch, and Dwayne Thomas, one of Florida's best. He used right. to get that. He was so smooth with it, man. He wore number forty-two, and he was a dog, man. He was what you guys were talking about, man. And Renal okay. White was from New York. He was killing it, man. And um, that was okay. a really good team. That was the team that started the bowl started street, the bowl street. street. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that and the off offensive coordinator was ricky bustle so they did a lot of running that year it was run yeah. first play action screens quarterback mm -hmm. friendly offense man so okay dj's one for one <laughs> yep love it okay love here it. we go two five let's so let's go let's go here we go which virginia tech defensive back holds the all-time record for most interception returns for a touchdown with touchdowns with four so this defensive back holds the all-time record with four touchdowns off of interceptions, right? Is it A, Eric Green, B, Keon Carpenter, C, Macho Harris, or D, John Granby? I'm pretty sure I know this one. I'm pretty okay. sure I just saw the answer to this one. Okay, so we'll go with you first, DJ. All right. Rest in peace to my boy, Keon Carpenter. I'm going with him. Mm-hmm. Um, all uh hall, -huh. you know, okay. set the standard for D block. I'm going with Keon, rest in peace. Okay, all right, here we go. Uh, Willie, who you got? Uh, you need a answers again? Yeah, one more time. Eric Green, the great yeah, Eric EG, Green, EG, Keon yeah. Carpenter, Macho yeah. Harris, or John Granby. And John Granby is a DB. I'm not trying to trick y'all right. on that one. Sometimes right, I get right, tricky. Right. Most interceptions returned for touchdown. It's all time record with four yeah, four, 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 four touchdowns off interception. Yep. Man, a lot of people got close. Four? Mm -hmm. Carve out those two, Miami, and the other one. Well, I'm going to go with Cho. I think Macho got it. Mm -hmm. I don't think Macho got it. You're saying Macho? Your final yeah. answer? Final answer. All, right. all right. All right. Danny, who you got? Well, you know, what's funny is I believe if we're talking about who had the most interceptions in a game in the NFL, who's a Virginia Tech DB, I believe it would be D'Angelo Hall, who had four against Jay Cutler and the Bears, right? Yeah. Sure did. He hated Cutler. Yeah, he team. did. Yeah. yeah, that was fun. No, but I, I'm, see, I'm, I'm, with, I'm with DJ on this one. I'm 99.99% sure it's Keon Carpenter because I'm pretty sure that I saw this answer on Twitter earlier this week, and I think you might have been oh, tagged man. in the tweet, Dwight. Really? <laughs> I was? I, I right. it popped up on my timeline and it was a, a it of... was a clip yeah it was a clip from an old game so I'm pretty sure it's Keon Carpenter. So Keon would be the right answer because it makes sense because he had so many big plays. Everyone knows about that Miami one. Mm -hmm. Um, then he had that one. He's like a host of a bunch that has three in one game. Him, yeah. one of the Fuller kids, Lorenzo Ferguson at Clemson, um, Ike Charlton against West Virginia in '98. Yeah. And there's a few well, Garnell. No, not, was it Garnell? Yeah, G, it was G a, got G Garnell. Got yeah. However, the correct answer is. Macho Harris. No way. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Finest. <laughs> Black and oh, gold. Man. Spring is, hey. Spring is, baby. Hey. Yeah. I was yeah. confident. Yeah. Don't be was, mad at me about yeah, that. You, oh, hey, I live, hey, I live in a house for the Springers, man. I already know. Yeah. Joe got it. Oh, no. yeah. You know, hey, Holland Springs is doing it right now, man. Sure. Um, Yeah, man. When I was looking at it, I, I, I do the Hokie trivia every week, and I would tell you, man, it's crazy because you see players you see supposed to, then you forget. You like I was looking at Garnell Wiles; he's up there, man, and um, you know Tech DBs and just some of these guys. The whole records is crazy, man. Let me um, tell you something real quick. OG, yo. you know, no name popped up the other day, and I was like, oh man, because I was watching Cowboys and Giants. J. Ron Hosey. I was oh. talking about him. Yeah, man, Hosey, Hosey, yeah. Awesome. Hosey had a whole season full of picks, just taking the ball away, just playing with that edge. Obviously, E.G. You know, everybody's secondary. And I, and I remember, I think on the, on another show, you may have talked about, you know, all time DBs, if you could play with other guys from different eras and what that would look like. But it's been so many streaks of guys making plays and then having opportunities at the next level, man. I mean, these dudes never playmakers, but Hosey name pop up. And I'm like, man, I forgot how cold mm -hmm. this cat was. Mm -hmm. And obviously, Doc, you know, in my in my book, he's right up there, one or two of all time. Uh, right. 
But he, he was he was he was speaking to him. He was a hokey trivia question. Actually, D Hall got him wrong. He <laughs> he said his name first, then D Hall got his name wrong. Not name wrong, but he got the answer wrong. Hosley, I said, who's the Virginia Tech who led the uh season um with nine interceptions? It was Jerron Hosley. Yeah. He had nine interceptions one season. If you remember, I believe he got three against Russell Wilson at NC State. NC State. When we came back and won 41 to 24 or something. That led, um, that, led the, yeah. that had to lead the nation, right? He was up to actually he finished second that year. Um he was leading in there. I think a kid uh somebody got him by one, but um mm-hmm. he definitely was like top two, top three in the nation. I mean, J Ron, J Ron was special. And that's so funny you mentioned that, Willie, because what I look at it is, and I tell my son this, even though he's a hooper basketball is a bit different it's so many great guys in the acc the MEAC, the big 10 the sec that were legit ballers on a collegiate level that don't pan out in the league um it is such a crucial <clears> business <throat> it's the right system you know having the right coach having a team that believe in you versus you know a numbers game where they want to keep you but they can't um and jay ron i remember with the giants he had some plays and then you know some injuries and then numbers and coaching mm-hmm. changing and you know, it is what it is, man. But yeah, yeah shout out to J. Ron Hosley. Okay. He, 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 he need to get more like love. That. Like when they when they talk about the, the greats, especially in the yeah. D-block, he need, his name needs to be brought up a lot more for I'm sure. I'm telling you, man. That's yeah. it. No, you're right, DJ. I may even leave the charge on that one. That's actually, mm-hmm. you know, again, shout out to J. Ron, man. Um yeah, man. also from Florida. Another Florida yeah. great. He was a yeah, Florida great, man. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's see who can get another one. Number three, which Virginia Tech kickoff. Which Virginia Tech kickoff returner is the all-time kickoff returner leader in yardage with 1,577 yards? So this guy leads all-time in yardage as a kickoff returner. Is it A, my guy Darrell Roberts from Smithfield? He was on the show last year. Is it B, Marcus McKell? Is it C, John Jeffries? Or D, David Wilson? Yeah. Danny, I'm going to go with you first. Ooh. I'm over two, man. I'm over two. I've been. That's I feel all- like I've been leaning on DJ and Willie just to get there. To get <laughs> That's there. why I'm going yeah, with right. you first. Yeah, I, had, yeah. I, had, I had to get the former player insight before I get my answer. I was so sure about the last one. You know. Well, you were close though. I mean, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, is it Darrell Roberts? Is it Marcus McHale? Is it John Jeffries or David Wilson? All time kickoff return leader in yardage with fifteen seventy seven. I feel you see when we're talking about what what I was watching, I remember David Wilson taking one of the house on Georgia Tech, but I, it's hard to believe that Wilson would be the all time kick returner leader yeah, in terms of yardage yeah. at Tech. So mm-hmm. what are what's what's B and C? Uh, Marcus McKell, John Jeffries, all kickoff returners and mm-hmm. Darrell Roberts. Hmm. Mm. Man, I <laughs> give, me, I'll, give me an educated guess. Right. right. I'll go. I'll, I'll go with Roberts. All right. You're going with Roberts. That's your final answer. And you know, you some OG, what, yeah. what, what, like the previous or the, the questions, the first question, when you gave years and who was in the game, you know, those, those hits definitely do help because <laughs> now everybody's brain is thinking, all right, which defense was letting people touch the paint? So we can get all these damn kickoff returns, exactly. right? Exactly. So which, which one of these defenses was, you know, up like that? Because, you know, we won a whole lot of kickoff returns. Whenever D finished 2007, won a lot of kickoff returns going on. So guys had to eat that. A lot of punt returns. Ed Royal, D. Hall, Dre, and Ron Yell, all those guys, punt returns. But it won a whole lot of kickoff returns. So now my brain is thinking which mm-hmm. defenses was giving it up. To uh, allow us to get all these guys on return. Come on, yards. man. You're trying to give me, I'm not giving no contest clues. You're stalling. Come on, man. <laughs> hey, you see what I, I, did what I was doing? Hey, you hey, doing what my ass son ass doing when I asked him if he did his homework, man. You're hey. giving me a lot of the rhetoric. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I did that. Hey, I'm 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 gonna go with Darrell as well. Because I'm not I'm not confident in the older guys and I just was taking a stab. So I'm gonna go with the names right. that I do know. And I think Darrell right. is uh, all time leader. All right, DJ, who you got, my guy? Yeah, I'm gonna go with Danny and Willie as well. I'm gonna go with Darrell Roberts. Um, now you are gonna make me go back and 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 study the, the and look up the other guys because I'm not yeah. too familiar. That's with what them. I gotta do, man. I, I feel I feel bad for that because I should I should I should know my history, but I'm gonna go with Darrell. Well, you said Darrell. I'll say this: I'm working on um right now getting John Jeffries and uh, Von Hemron on for next week's show. 
to uh you know we you know we did that last show with William Boat right and Melendez Bird and that's the one thing I'm happy with Pra that he's doing that is getting everybody back. Um that's long overdue and I'm glad you guys are going to do that. But congrats to you guys all you all got the right answer it is Darrell Roberts. Um he is My the first all-time kickoff yeah, leader with yardage with 1577. He had <laughs> um some great returns. I, one of the one that always sticks out is the great return against Alabama in the Chick-fil-A mm-hmm. kickoff. Um, we, were, we were down six nothing, and he scored and took it back. We and he get, we were up seven six. He took off. He was a great kickoff return again. Another three star recruit from in state Smithfield, where you only went over there yeah. and you took the wrong exit, or you were trying to get a ham in the seven five seven. Nobody from Nupa News or Hampton oh, yeah. or went over to Smithfield. Smithfield. Yeah. Of, yeah, yeah, you went o- unless yeah. you were trying to beat traffic and go Route seventeen <laughs> or something. Shout out to oh. Darrell. He was on the show. Great guy. He's coaching. So yeah, yeah, it's a good it. dude. Yeah. That was yeah. Dwight. That was the first Chick Fil A kickoff game too, right? We played Alabama yeah. twice in the Chick Fil A kickoff game. Yeah. That was the first one. That was the first one with Todd yeah. Rod and Ryan Williams. And, and, and oh boy, was, yeah, Ryan. that was that was the first one. Yeah, that was the one when uh, we Jake went, Johnson uh, at linebacker. Yeah, yeah. we went. We, yeah, we went toe to toe with them that year. And yeah, we went toe to toe with them. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was. Uh, hey, man. We got we got yeah. to get to that man. We got to get yeah. Williams, boy. Ooh. Well, you know, we we open up the season at, on playing those type of games, those prime times. We got to win them, man. We got to get. And we were ranked in the top ten and <laughs> or eleven, and we were relevant. And I know what you mean, DJ, because it was like, okay, we lost a close one, but then we were going to get back on track and we were going to play it. And the ACC was also pretty good, and you know, so you mm-hmm. could get you know some credible wins where you beat ranked teams and. We got to get back to that, but you know, well, I know Pride does. That was that was 2009. That was Bama's first national championship under Saban, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. I think uh, that was the same year. They won it with uh Ingram. Yeah, Ingram, Ingram won the Heisman. The was Julio Jones on that team? I think so. I well, yeah, I have man. to double check that, but I Julio, think that was yeah, Julio Jones. Changes. He was a he was a because, freshman because he was a, yeah. he was he went he came out in eleven with Cam. Yeah, yep. and him yeah. and Cam and beat him and Cam got into it that game. Right. right. Yeah, they called they called a PI on Cam and it was BS. Him and Julio, they look like two Greek gods. They're like Avengers <laughs> going at it. You're right. I was like, yo, again, I'm with DJ. I'm with DJ, man. We gotta get back to that, man. Y'all miss me with this ODU and Wildfoot, but you know, <laughs> baby steps. I digress. Baby right, steps. Right, right. Baby steps. Right. Baby steps. Right. All right, last right. one, man. We gotta right. yeah, we gotta get called back up, man. I love this. All right, last one. Finish strong, as Gentry said. Finish strong. Mm. All right, number four. I'll start with you, Willie. Which Virginia Tech player holds the VT Bowl record with the most point, points scored with a total of 18 points? This is like touchdowns and field goals. So this is 18 yeah. points by individual players. So Virginia Tech Bowl game record. Is it Darian Evans? B, J.C. Coleman? C, Deshaun McLeese? Or D, Lee Suggs? Ooh. So it's no field goals, obviously, but 18 yeah. points, you know. Who scored so, three touchdowns? Yep. Yeah, that's basically what you're saying. See how you did it? I didn't want to see three touches. I'm, I'm, right, right, right. See the trickiness. It is a trickiness in rookie trivia, Danny. Yeah, uh, there's a trickiness, see? Because I got you thinking about 18 and not three touchdowns. See? That's right. right. See, you right, cheated. Right. You I see what you're doing. I see. You see what I'm so, doing, man? One more time. So, Darren okay, Evans. Here we go. Is it Darren Evans, J.C. Coleman, Deshaun McLeese, or back. Lee Suggs? It's a Virginia Tech bowl game record. Bowl game record by right? individual, not not so, so much a season record. We played, we played. So hold on, real quick. We did Clemson, Florida State, Air Force. We ain't eating those games. They go I'm through a go bowl game. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with. Hey, hey, I had to think through that. Let me go with. Uh, I'm gonna go with Darren Evans. Okay. All right. There's some Darren tough Evans. ones. Darren I know. Evans. A little, little right. sneaky, low key, great college career, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. He's yes. another one. He's yes, another one. Italians, man. Yo, listen, he's another one, man. Like J. Yes, Ron, like you Italians. forget, man. God bless Darren, man. He was, man. and he was a top flight recruit too, right out of Indianapolis, right? He, he was, was top dog. He was Mister, he was Mr. Football, Mister, Mister. Right. Exactly. Gave yeah. Great he player of the year from Indy. Ran over that dude Wiles from Maryland. Got Jesus. I think with Charlie Wiles when he got him something, man. Like yeah. you got to get those guys, those type of cats back in the building, man. Thanks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go, with Darren. All right, Danny, who you got? Is it I Evans? Was, I was gonna say Evans, but just to just to just to be different here, I think I'm gonna say Lee Suggs because I can't. I I remember J.C. Coleman playing in a couple of bowl games. I don't think he went for three touchdowns. 
And as much I remember Darren Evans playing in that ugly orange bowl against Cincinnati <laughs> that they that we won, by the way, but just not a lot of points in that game. So I'm gonna I'm actually gonna go with Lee Suggs here, and I might be wrong, but at least I didn't okay. go over four like D'Angelo Hall. DJ, what you got, quarter? Talk to him. Let me see. Let me see. It's between AC Coleman, Darian Evans, Deshaun McLeese, or Lee Suggs. I'm gonna go Lee Suggs. Okay. All right. Let's Let's see. see. All right. So the correct answer is Lee Suggs. 2001 Gator Bowl. He uh, went for three touchdowns. Yeah. Uh the Gator Bowl. Um I got a Gator Bowl hat in here somewhere. Yeah, he went, he went crazy. (laughs) Lee Suggs was a touchdown machine when you look at the record books. That one, um, uh, that one, was that Mike's last game? That was Mike's last Mark. game. They beat they beat uh Woody Danzler and those Danzler? guys. They blew okay. him out. Oh, yeah, I watched, hold on, let me think. Marcus played that. No, 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 no. Marcus came later. Marcus played in a Gator Bowl though, right? Mm, yeah, against that was Louisville. Louisville. That was Louisville. That was, Louisville. That was, that was, that was the yeah, year was we should have won the ACC chair. That was 05. Right, right. That was the inaugural right. season for the ACC. We should have won it that year. Right. Because we went we went Sugar Gator Gator back to back. And so you're saying Lee eight against Clemson? Yeah, three and touchdowns. Yeah, it's in the record books. Was, yeah, I mean, I know he was, I know he, I know he was born. I, I feel like I, I remember Jared Storm. I remember uh, Greg Kendrick. I remember Mike. Mm. Dang, I don't remember Lee eating three, three. You know trays. what it might be? It, it might be. Nations. It might be. No, it says here. No, I'm looking at my notes. I went off the site. It's the 2001. It was. It was. It was. So Clemson. nothing. So not, It was Clemson. Okay, because I know we did Florida State the following year. Yeah, he with did, Grant No, with Grant No, yeah, oh, yeah. but Andre yeah. Davis ate that game. Yes, yes, he did. Andre Russell Davis Rattles ate that game yeah. because right. uh, Bobby Bowden was mic'd up and he said, "This kid, I need to put some pressure on him." So they start pressuring Grant No. Yeah, yeah, because Florida right. State. Right. They, now they, that I think about it, you're right. Mm-hmm. Dang, they okay. couldn't match up. Shout yeah, out to my boy trivia. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. Y'all got some answers right, man. So, um, shout out to Alexandra Restaurant Partners once again, um, for for sponsoring us, man. Um, so. Um, we at the end of the show, gentlemen, man. This is the part of the show where I allow the guests, Mike and I, including myself, I'll give one where we do hokey shout outs. You can shout out, um, you know, anybody from a professor, your teammates, a coach, um, someone in the community doing great things, a, a current NFL player, past one, as long as it's a hokey. Uh, we want to keep this thing, you know, talking all things tech. So um, hokey shout outs, you know, we we joked, uh, Mike joked, um, who was it, man? Aaron Rouse could not stop giving shout outs. So uh, Aaron <laughs> Rouse kept, I said, yo, you give the, a politician a mic. Aaron Rouse started shouting out. He was like, yo, Big Vic, I got one more. I got one more. I got." So I'm going to have a rule. You can right. give a couple. But, you know, Rouse named yeah. like 17 people, man. Of so, course, of course. Yeah. He on that campaign, but we got to. But those DBs love to talk and make plays. But shout out to Aaron That's Rouse, good. man. Great guy, man. My dude. So um, Willie. Um, do you have a hokey shout out and who is it or who are they? You know what? I, I have I have one specific one that was very near and dear. So when I got to tech, um, my mom, she always made it a habit of creating relationships with the people who were gonna be around me, right? Um, mm. single parent household, you know, Coach Beam and Coach Foster, they came to the house and we're gonna take care of your boy. So she always made it a point to make sure that she checked in. And so in order to get to Coach Beamer, you had to go through Mrs. Clark, Miss Diane. Right. And so Miss Clark, she was up there at the front desk over there where Berlin had his office to the side and Miss Diana's in the front. And then Coach Beam's got the big office in the back. And she was just one of those ladies who became like a mom away from home who you can go in there and just check in on. And she's asking questions, making sure you're doing the right stuff, could joke with you, you know, drop a little sage wisdom. And so Miss Clark, I got to see her when I did the Legends of Lane back in 2011, um, you know, and I kept up with her son. And, and their family. And so Mrs. Clark is the one Hokie that, you know, that wasn't necessarily a coach or a player or even in the, you know, she was on a support staff that really stood out to me during my time there. And then um, beyond that, uh, Reed Monahan is the other one and his wife, Casey, who were in charge of um, Athletes in Action, the AIA group, where we used to host the Bible studies on campus and was just, you know, another sounding board. Because, you know, young, impressionable men, we want to make good choices consistently and develop the type of man we want to be down the line. You know, guys are married, you're, you know, you got a lady, hopefully, you know, that turns into fiance and then wife. And so you're trying to develop the type of person you're going to be. And that's what college was for me, beyond just the academics and the football, was socially and the type of guy I want to bring 
to my relationship with my wife and my two boys. And so mm -hmm. um, those people had a great impact on me uh, during my time there. And I'm super grateful, forever thankful. Uh, and then obviously the coaches who helped mold that and, and bring that, you know, that um, that athleticism and that leadership mindset out of it. But Miss Diane and Reed Monahan and Casey Monahan were the ones who I would love to shout out because they had a profound impact who wouldn't notice, you know, on the field or in the meeting rooms, but kind of away from the field. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And I appreciate you shouting them out. I know when they see this or they hear about it through the grapevine, they're going to appreciate it, man, because um, they sometimes are the people that we don't always remember, but they are the backbone and foundation of any great program. So yeah. shout out to them, man. DJ, who do you want to shout out for your Hokey shout out? Yeah, yeah. So I, I have three. Uh, well, first, overall, I just want to shout out just like you, Willie, you, Dwight, just all the people, you know, the players, the OGs who came before me setting the standard, right? Um, I looked up, I look up, I still look up to all of y'all, you know, uh, just a, as men, as fathers, um, just a great players. Uh, so thank you for setting the standard, um, paving the way for a guy like me, you know, to have an opportunity to, to, to play in a great place like Virginia Tech. So all the all the guys who came before me, thank you. Thank you for setting the you know, leading by example. Um, I really appreciate y'all. Um, the second would be uh, to my man, Jim Cavanaugh, Coach Cav. Man, recruited me. Yo, you know, good Cav, one. Good one, man. You know, mm. people, about Cav saved me, man. He came came mm. out to 757 and got me. Okay. And you want to talk about a, a guy, you know, Cav was no nonsense. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. You talk about he, he going he gonna to tell you how it is, tell you straight, with no, you know, give it to you straight with no chaser. You know what I'm saying? So he was <laughs> he was a guy, man, who just kept me in line. He told me what I needed to hear. You know what I'm saying? And um, I, I remember my time when uh, I went to – a hard grade for my semester. I had to go, and uh, he got me through. He he was he was hard on me. He was tough on me. He told me he he gave me gave it to me real. What the reality was, and that that pushed me through and motivated me to get up out of there and make sure I got my my scores and everything I needed to get the tech. So thanks to Coach Cavanaugh, man, for just being there and just you know keeping me in line. And when I needed a you know swift kick in the butt, he was there to, to, to get me straight. Right. So shout out to Coach Cav. Um, and then the last one is just, you know to the Hokie Nation. Um. Best fans in the land, right? Yes. I, I got a message for them. Um, stick with the stick with the guys. You know what I'm saying? Don't get discouraged. Um, we're young. It's early. Um, they don't understand how much we feed off them. Willie Dwight, you know, man, when that when that thing is jumping, when that crowd is rocking, man, we feed off that and we need that, you know. And I think it's, it's easy now, you know, we're in this microwave era to where everybody wants to instant success, right? We got to be in the bowl playoff, you know, contentions in year two. That's just not realistic, right? So just stick stick with them, Hokie Nation. Show up. I know you guys are going to show up, whether we playing, in, you know, in, in lane or we on the road. Be there with the team. And just I promise you, we stay down with them. We're going to be back to where we want to be. So shout out to the nation. Y'all don't know how much, you know, we, we appreciate y'all. And uh, we feed off y'all energy. So make sure y'all continue to, to support those boys and just be as loud as you can, man. Keep rocking. And we're going to be, you know, back on top soon. So that's those are my three. No doubt, man. That's a great point. And I see you on Twitter a lot, mm -hmm. DJ, saying, be patient, man. Way to work, young fellas. We're going to get this thing right. Um, and you write about Cav. I talked about Cav in our last, well, a few weeks ago when me and Mike recorded. And I was talking about Cav was so real. And he was, him and Coach Height and Stein Spring were huge parts of the recruiting and getting those pipelines going, especially in the 7 5, but even across the Commonwealth. Kavanaugh was a no nonsense guy, but Great father, great family man, daughters, wonderful people. I love yeah. Coach Cav. I mean, I knew Coach Cav was about business, man. Me and Mike joked about it one episode when him and, and Beeman was in Ridley Circle Projects and Newport News East End. And Cav ain't even blink. Mm -hmm. And East End, you don't be, you know, you don't be out in Chestnut and 31st Street, the bottom. You don't just be out there. And Cav is a old school white man. So, right. you know, <laughs> and he was a straight shooter. I mean, he'd tell him, I'm like, coach, man, we need to offer him. He's like, he's sorry as hell. <laughs> you know, he's soft. <laughs> would be like, he's trash. He was saying trash right. before it became hip hop and shit. Yeah, he'd be like, he's yeah. trash. You see him play, he's garbage. Yeah. And I was like, yo, Cab, but you know, I love Coach Cab. That's a great shout out too, DJ. Yeah. Willie, Danny, who, man. Uh, who, who recruited you, Willie? I had Bud. I had Bud himself, man. Bud came up. But I tell you yeah, what, Bud? They, oh yeah, Bud yeah. didn't know the Virginia. Bud, That's Bud right. didn't know the Virginia. But DJ, this is how cold it was. So Bud came and got me, and then he stuck me in Cav room. Right now I'm in the room, and and we got Pearson, all five eight five nine of them. We got Birdman, 
Corey Bird, he's 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, I'm pulling yeah. up 6'3". I'm like, I don't belong in here, man. You got me <laughs> spilling, wrong shoulder. And I said, that's not – I was a quarterback, right? Yeah. I was a quarterback. And I played corner and safety. Like, mm -hmm. I wanted number seven. They gave it to Mike. You know, I'm like, I wanted to be, you know, finesse. Oh, I forgot it's about cow. that. Yeah, you wanted yeah, seven. I, was, I, was, I forgot about that. I was thought I was an athlete. You know what I mean? But they stuck me in that room, man. And you know, thank God for Whammy and Bud and them going through the you know the practices. It was like, yeah, we need to get get over there to that safety room, man. That's where you need to be. So I was able to get out of the Whips and Rovers room and go over to the DB room where it was like, hi, my peoples. Everybody in the, every table had former quarterbacks. We had Midget, I, uh, uh, um, myself. Uh, you know, Fuller eventually came in. Eric Green. Everybody at one point had a table, and it was a former quarterback at every table. So I'm Nick Sorensen, I'm like, okay, these are my, Mookie. Like, these are my people now. This is where I need to be. That was like, that was like a, a construction hat. This was over here. It was like, you know, four seasons. That's yeah. where I needed to be, right? No doubt, and so man. it was, uh, it was a big difference. But Cat, yeah, I had to get up there. And Cat, Cat was rough, man. If you want Pierce, it was real. It, Pat, man, Cat tried to give me number twenty two. I was like, you just had Pearson? Heck no. I ain't wearing 20. Give me 35. So me and Keith Burnett switched numbers. So Keith was supposed to be 35 and I was supposed to be 20 because I was mm -hmm. a rover and we switched. I said, man, I'm going to take 35. Man, ain't nobody got that. It don't matter. I'm going to make it work because I'm not you wearing work 20. Too. In, you made it work, too. You made it work. In Cavs' work meeting room, I'm not wearing 20 because everything is going to be. That's not how Pierce did it. That's not how Pilo did it. I'm good, man. So yeah, that, that was a funny picture, story. That was my guy. Yeah, I, I yeah. love Cav, man. He, he, like I love said, him too. He kept us. He kept us in going in the right direction, man. And I, great, I great appreciate dude. the lessons now more than I did when I was in his. Absolutely, room absolutely, now. absolutely. Right. Yeah, Danny, man, who's your guy or lady I'm, or who's your shout out? Yeah, man, I, I've I've just got a couple of quick things, and 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 the first thing I'll say is that if I look at who's made the biggest impact on my life as a Virginia Tech alum my experience as a sportscaster that went to Virginia Tech and just overall my fandom of the school that I went to, the biggest person would be you, Dwight. It would be you, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> it would says, definitely wow. be you, man. Hey, Going man. back because we've done we've done so much together. You know, like it's it, it, we we obviously have a special bond and and we're gonna do our we're gonna do a segment in DC on Saturday. For anybody that's listening, 1067 the fan, 10 a.m. Saturday morning, get to your radios. That's where you'll be able to hear Dwight will do that. But I, the other couple of things I wanted to say, and I, I'm glad that that Willie was talking about him, Pearson, man, Pearson Prelo is someone that I got to know when when we did our we did the tailgate show together for a couple of years. We went down to the Battle of Bristol together. We went down mm -hmm. to Charlotte and and went to the Belk Bowl together, and just being able to 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 pick his brain as as someone that played for Bud Foster, played at Tech, you know, played in the era that you all played in where. Virginia Tech was just becoming a household name and, and wasn't even really at the beginning of, of a couple of your guys' careers. So and, and not to mention Pearson as, as a D.C. sports fan, Pearson played with Sean Taylor and Sean Taylor was somebody that got about that. Yes. My goodness, that he's he's he's, he's my favorite NFL player of all time. So and, and, and also Pearson's just the man. He's a, an yeah. awesome person. He's an awesome dad. Um, I'm grateful to, to have known him and, and really everything being able to talk. Virginia Tech football as, as someone that went to the school with with you all who are just such legends within the program is a privilege and I do not take it for granted and I, I hope you guys know that and the last thing that I'll say is as a sportscaster that came from tech Bill Roth is someone that left mm. and then has come back since then and and he's a dear friend and mentor to me and and his friendship means the world to me and and Mike Burnup his partner is has also been just an awesome awesome guy was super helpful before the spring game and helping getting me prepped for that. So um, Virginia Tech, the whole family, right? It, it Whether you're playing the games or whether you're just covering the games or you're just around the team, man, it's a family and, it, and it's special. And, I, and I'm just grateful to be a part of it. No, man, I appreciate that, Danny. And also, too, um, you're right about everybody you name, man. Um, Bill Roth is, is a great guy. Mike and him got great chemistry, man. And um you know, Pearson, man, I, he was my teammate, and uh, I saw him jump that 44-inch vertical. Ooh, 43. Y'all stories are the best. You guys yeah, have Pearson, great man. stories. Pearson and I, man, me, him, and Jamel Smith and Mike Hawks, man, one night, there them summers is. in Blacksburg. Them summers in Blacksburg, when you from the 7-5, they're a lot different. But at the same time, I loved it. But one night, we almost, this before Twitter and IG, social media, we almost caught a charge. We was out 
chasing people the whole the whole summer with water guns. We were rolling up on people on the drill. Collegiate field. suites, right? Collegiate you know, we suites. Had, well, no, that was that was but right before I moved to Collegiate, we were in Fox okay. Ridge. And the year after, and we were out there running around, but you forget in Fox Ridge and these apartments, you have college students, but then you got families. Yeah, yeah. regular so folks. Someone that's out there, we out there with them with super soakers, and somebody called the police, man. And uh, <laughs> oh, nine of Blacksburg finest rolled up on us, man. And uh, <laughs> Pearson, man, Pearson like was that. out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For a full, but anyway, uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to wrap up with this one, man. I had to keep him on my phone, man. I actually was at the ODU game, and you guys. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but I, we'll try to show it on, on the recording. But my Hokie shout out, he's technically an honorary Hokie. So is Officer uh, Vince Houston, Co- uh, Captain Houston. Yeah, You guys yeah. know him. I don't know if you can yeah. see him. Yeah, right there. There he is. Him? Yep. Yeah. Right here, yeah, 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 yeah. And right he was the guy I saw him. I didn't know he was still doing it. They did a big feature on him. Cause he was the guy that ran with Bima and the coaches. He was his right hand man. Every winter loss, he was right there beside Coach Bima. And um, I was sitting. I had front row seats for the ODU game. They actually upgraded ours, and I was sitting there. And he came up, and it brought tears to my eyes because it was like seeing a childhood mentor, or someone special in your life. Cause I grew up in the seven five, and I love Hampton and Newport News, but Blacksburg is just as important. And those were formative years for me. I met my wife there. I met you know guys like you when I came back and visited and even my teammates and even the guys that's there now when I go back it's so different from Northern Virginia where I live where I love as well I'm a Virginia guy but Tech was special and he's one of those guys you know um, Officer Houston who every time I saw him he was one of those guys too because whether you play ball or not when you back then in the 90s and 2000s you know things got thick on campus so you know somebody (laughs) getting run their mouth man football team put hands on you and um you know, no, you know, I won't even about all that life, but I was around it. And um, he always had good time. He would catch us. So, yeah, hey, guys, how y'all doing? He would talk to us. And then he was just a father figure. And then when you had a school like Tech to have a, a male role model like that, who's a police officer, but also, re- you know, humanistic approach, very relatable and cared about you and wanted to make sure you were safe when he saw you in those streets. I still remember that. That impact he had on me was very important, man. So. I just want to shout out him, man. It was great talking to him. I saw him at the ODU game, and um, I, I introduced him to my son and, you know, saw my wife, and it was just great, man. So want to make sure we show him love, man, because those are the people, like what Willie named, those are the people that we got our coaches and, you know, we got our friends and our teammates, but those adults in those years at Tech are the ones when you thinking about transferring or you feel like quitting or giving it up, they the ones that keep you going. And, um, you know, I agree, man. And Hokie Nation, you keep us going, man. So yeah. this is another great show, guys. I appreciate y'all jumping on, man. Um, this was another epic show with two great legends and Danny, another guy, Noakes Noakes. We came in different, but you okay. filled in great, man. And um, what channel is the game on? Did you find it? We're at 330 ACC UNC Network. ACC Network, ACC indeed. Yep. Network. ACC Network. Tune yep. in. If you're traveling to Chapel Hill, please be safe. Um, mm-hmm. Y'all keep my cousin Mike and his family in prayer. Everybody in Florida, if you're yeah. in the path of the hurricane, I'm not a weatherman. Take shelter. Try to, you know, hunker down and, and right. just, you know, I'm praying for, you know, safe and, and great weekend for everybody, man. And, um, right. you know, you know, we, we appreciate all y'all. So like we say every episode, man, go Hokies. Go Hokies. Go Hokies, baby. All right. All right.